following is a UTV 44 Sports production. Friday Night Rivals. This is the Green and Phillips UTV 44 Game of the Week, presented by the Mobile and Baldwin County Sheriff's Offices and the Drug Education Council. Big matchup in 6A Region 1 tonight here on UTV 44 as the Daphne Trojans travel across the bay to open up their season against the number three ranked team in 6A, the Saraland Spartans. These two teams had an epic battle last season. We expect more of the same here tonight in our first visit ever to Spartan Stadium here in Saraland. Good evening. I'm Jim Cox. My partners, as always, on our Game of the Week, it's Dan Brennan and Vic Lockett. And, Dan, I think a, a big storyline for us here tonight is just the atmosphere being in Saraland. Yeah, I think you're all going to get a kick out of this. I mean, this is a new program, basically, mm -hmm. emerging program, very good already, right? Yep. Went to the state championship game last year, and you don't think that this community is completely galvanized? It's all about the Spartans anywhere in Saraland, Alabama, and certainly tonight right here. Great offensive mind and their coach, Jeff Kelly. He's really a guy who can throw the football around. He's got a talented quarterback to do that. Mm -hmm. If you have that on that side of the ball and you're Daphne, you got to have a shutdown corner to take some of that away. Tyrick Richardson may be busy tonight. He may be busy all year long, but he's up to it. Very competitive young guy. We got a chance to talk to him during the pregame show. Not the biggest guy, but he's got all the skills, the speed, the ball skills to uh, defend the corner. He'll also come up and hit you, too. I know, again, size-wise, you're thinking, really? No, really, this kid's a player. Yeah, you're probably going to see him and Velas Jones matched up a lot here this evening. Vic Lockett, we talk about Sarah Land, the offense. They have got a quarterback who's going to graduate in 2018. Jack West, everybody already wants him. That's right. You know, we're already here at the castle, so here's the boy king, Jack West. Take a look at him there, 6'4", 210. As you said, already got offers from Alabama, Auburn, UCLA. Hadn't played a down of uh, high school football until last week, but he did pretty well. 15 or 21, 201 yards and a touchdown. So tonight he will come out and test and defend the castle tonight. So I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, it should be a great matchup here tonight. Jack West just playing in a jam. He did all that just in the first half last week of the win against Jackson. Kickoff comes up next. Sarah Land playing host to the Daphne Trojans here on UTV 44. The Daphne Chitters hoping they've got a lot to cheer about tonight. Kickoff comes up next on UTV 44. It's a big to-do on Friday nights here in Saraland. Dan Brennan, they get everybody out there to get this one going. Yeah, our first chance to witness this and, and soak it all in. And uh, so far, so good, huh? We're excited to get this one going. Let's check in for our first orthopedic group sideline report down on the field. Ashley Pope. We are in year two of covering Coach Kelly in the Spartan Sarah Land. And let me just tell you, I have learned he is very superstitious. Every week in the pregame meal, it is grilled chicken, green beans, and rolls. And only they're allowed to drink blue Powerade. After that, the team as a whole has to walk down and walk the field together. He believes in tradition and superstition and luck every week. I know you had a great sit down with Coach Kelly this week here on the campus of Sarah Land. You know, I, it, it was it was really an eye-opening hour of my time. But this is a guy that's in complete control, and he's deserved it. Kickoff, Liardis Batiste takes it at the 10 for the Daphne Trojans. Across the 20, slips a tackle to about the 27-yard line, and we'll see Daphne's offense come out. Coach Glenn Vickery, 12th season at Daphne. Great winning percentage, 31 years as a head coach, 239 career wins. I think what's most impressive at Daphne, you know, state championship, 64 and eight in region play. Amazing, these are the teams that know you best, right? Yep. They can coach, you know, they can scout you closely and good players, but a great cohesive coaching staff. They've had a long time, a lot of these guys have been here. John Quinley, the senior quarterback, 6'2", 160 pounds. Looks far side, able to get that one off. Brandlin Purdue, the senior, with a catch and a first down across the 40 and the 45-yard line. Bumped out of bounds on the Saraland sideline. Got a flag. I'm going to say hold his phone just a minute. Starting lineup brought to you by Greer's, Yates, Rhodes, Barr, Cook, and Morrow. Returners from last year up front. Khalil Johnson and Brandlin Purdue. Purdue a big year last year as a junior. Henderson will get the ball some tonight as well. Miller in the backfield. McCullum and John Quinley. 
is your starting quarterback as a senior. Big call to start the game I mean, in terms of the call on the field by the officials, Vic. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, he got in. It was yep. a little downfield. I kind of thought it was the tight end went out and he was covered, but uh, they're going to call him for lineman downfield. Being real chinchy about that on these screen plays. Right, wipes out a 13-yard pickup on first down. So easy to do, and it's hard to get those guys to hold up before they take off on those screen plays. And we'll back him up. And it'll be first and 15. We have an ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty replay first down. Almost any time you see that play is successful, if you look at the replay, you can find somebody. You <laughs> might find somebody that, that released a little bit early. Not always. Yeah, first play for sure. They're all keyed up and hyped and ready to go down and get a good block. Sophomore Rashad Yelding checks in the game for the Trojans. Quinley gives it off. McCullum waits for a block and he's stopped there immediately. Blake Heron, senior linebacker, makes the stop for the Spartans. Bunch of blue collar kids on this Sarah Land team. Here's that defense, Jim. Mason Hoven returns to the starter. Mills and Blake Heron, Marcus Reed, a starter last year on the team that went to the semifinals. Edge and Mixon Henderson starting cornerback returns, as does Dunham, the safety. And Williams and Flott also started last year. Out of the backfield, able to swing this one up. Far side out to the 32-yard line and third and about seven coming up. Mixon there able to make the stop as Batiste with his first reception of the season. Watch it, Vic, as Mixon fights off a block to make the play right here. Yeah, right there, you know, you got to stay outside. And, uh, the corner did a good job of slowing him down from getting that edge out there so the linebackers can flow out there and make that tackle Mixon. To a third and five here for the Trojans. Opening drive of this big 6A Region 1 matchup tonight here. Quinley looks, dumps it out. McCullough can't hold on to it. And they'll bring up the punt team for the Daphne Trojans. Boy, how big was that penalty after the 15-yard gain on first down? Yeah, it kind of changed the complexion of the drive, didn't it? Uh, they started playing behind the eight ball and just wasn't able to get in front of it again. The back was open out there, and he was open early, but uh, the quarterback threw it to him late, and then he decided, oh, I, I wasn't going to get it, and forgot about it, and got in here yet. Here it comes, and drops it. Josh Varela will punt. Bellis Jones, the USC commit, stands back on his own 30. Good punt. Jones wants it. He gets run over. This will be a flag there. As this one is covered back at the 20, but Bellis Jones just got run over. Ball wasn't even near him. I got it. no idea what happened there, Vic. Yeah, Larkin. I think the punt coverage guy was probably looking up for the football and just not paying attention. Let's see right there. No, he went into him and kind of lowered his shoulder there. But uh, yeah, you got to give him opportunity to catch it first. And pretty, then you uh, can lower the boom. Pretty elementary stuff to yeah. make a mistake like that. First game, some jitters maybe. Yeah, I'm sure Bellis doesn't appreciate it either. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Coach Vickery either. I'm sure he's going to have a conversation. It's two he penalties. Likes to play two. real clean football, and that's the way he coaches them. Yeah, two costly penalties early on. Here for the Daphne Trojans, decided to see this offense led by Jack West. Well, it's going to so, be interesting about West, Jim. Is there? There's so, do you do you have them repunt? to give Bellis another chance, or do you take it from where the Trojans saw yeah, I think the Spartans covered it. up? I'd, I'd make him repunt it again. Probably going to take the penalty because Bellos may be a little bit uh, shot here. We have kick catching interference against the white team. That's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of foul. First down. All right, so moves it all the way up to the 44. If, if this offensive line can block and establish a run in, 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 in most of their games, that's when, obviously, you, you're going to see the best in Jack West, the young quarterback, because he will play action and make you pay. So accurate, so talented, so young. Sean Long ran for almost 1,400 yards. Last year was going to take the pitch, but we've got a flag before this one gets started. Probably some nerves on the offense now. Yeah, this Sarah Land team that went and lost in the championship game last year to play oh. Chalkville. Back to Spartans at 15 yards. They've got Sean Lawn and Nick Williams running backs. Dead ball. 
Being close to it on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay first down. The yeah, receiver probably didn't check in with the end line out there and lined up uh, a little too close, too tight on the football, maybe even across it. Was talking about Long and Williams, the two running backs, over 2,200 yards last year and 27 touchdowns, and they're both back this yeah, year. Jeff Kelly said, I don't think we blocked well enough last year. Long will get it this time, and he's going to be driven back. Great penetration is coming in is Jack Cushman, the sophomore linebacker. Onyx Brown, the starting linebacker, not playing tonight here. There's Jeff Kelly, fifth year at Saraland, 38 and 13. Of course, had stops at Satsuma to start his coaching career. Did a great job to help turn that program in the right direction. Then went to Jackson and took them to the state championship game. Never been an assistant coach. That's amazing. It's always dad coming into the stadium, Mr. Kelly. Kelly exterminating up here, been around for years. Second and 18, West with pressure, dumps this one behind Bellis Jones as the pressure was coming from D'Angelo Young, the senior defensive end in third and 18. Nothing new from Daphne to see them bring some heat. Trahern, Smith, Hasselberger, Prowl, and Dixon to protect the sophomore quarterback. Bellis Jones, as I said, going to USC. Cody Nolan, the other receiver, Stroud, the tight end. Henderson will be the blocking back, and Sean Long will be in there. Nick Williams will come in and get a lot of carries as well, and now they'll put Williams in the slot with Nolan to the near side and Bellis Jones up top on third and 18. West, a little ball fake, had some pressure again, looking to leave this one up in the air for Bellis Jones, and it's intercepted back at the 35-yard line. Brandon Bowers, who's not expected to start tonight, but with the Onyx Brown being out, they moved Ellis from safety to linebacker, and Bowers comes up with a pick. Yeah, Coach Kelly, you know, he's, he's been around Jack longer than I was, but I thought he'd protect the young guy and just kind of play it safe and get out of this drive and uh, play a little defense. Uh, sure don't want to ruin his confidence real early. Well, I think... That sort of thing can. But, you know, I think part of it is, is what Co Coach Kelly realizes is he's going to have tough times. Go ahead and have them, and, and, and we'll work it out. And it was funny because West, still on his seat, yep. was looking over to Kelly... Brandlin Purdue takes this one and he makes a move and he's out to the 45 yard line. He'll be close to a first down. And I thought on that drive too, Daphne, good pressure on Kelly yep, uh, on, on West on the two passing downs. They send people. They make you think offensively and they and and they uh, do something fast. Huh? Yeah, they do. They everything Daphne does is pretty quick and in fact this uh, offense looks like they're gonna up the tempo a little bit right now. Gain of nine plus, so second and short. McCullum has the first down, and he's into Saraland territory to the 45. Daphne already in positive yardage now. Getting ready to go in, in the cross of 50 for the first time. So like trying, to, trying to tackle a, a chest of drawers right yes. there. 5'8", <laughs> 200. We've we see, kind of seen he's had good patience early on here, waiting for his blocks to develop. Yeah, and then, then he, he could explode because he's a, he's a big, strong guy. Who does that remind you of? Guy playing for Jacksonville? Quinley fires to the near side, able to get that one complete. That's Drake Graves, and Graves to the 33-yard line, and the junior with his first catch of the season and another first down for the Daphne Trojans. Daphne's been around, not intimidated here in the, the heart of Spartan Nation. And this place is, especially on the Saraland side, Electric. really, really packed too, yeah. <laughs> Henderson in the slot. Purdue flanked out wide to the right, and now Quinley looks like he's going to change some things up. Yelding comes in to block. And McCullum plows ahead to the 25, down to about the 23-yard line. Bobbled that exchange a little bit, but holds on for another big game. Short little choppy steps, just keeping his feet moving, popping them up and down. If you don't tackle me, I'm going to just run right through it. So, Airlines going to have to bow up a little bit here if they're planning on stopping these Trojans. Working on it. Second and one after the nine-yard game. Batiste in the backfield, and he has trouble with the exchange as well, but a good job by Liardis Batiste. I think Quinley may have turned the wrong way. Yeah, it sure looked like it. Somebody went the wrong way. Yeah. He had a really stretch runner. to get that get that ball to the uh, running back. Exactly, yeah. He opens up to his left, and the back's not there, so he pivots all the way around just to get it to him to try to salvage the play, but uh, Edge in there no game. to make the stop. Second and one becomes third and three from the 25 here for the Trojans. 
McCollum right up the middle. He stood up and driven back in a loss on the play. Great penetration. Tanner Edge. We buffed him as he stuck his face in the hole. Great name for a linebacker. Edge. <laughs> also, Brian Dixon was in there. He was our guest on the pregame show. Yeah, they use him offensively and defensively. Short, you know. No gain, and Valera will come on and try a 42-yard field goal attempt. Valera, your prototypical six-foot, 210-pound kicker. <laughs> wearing number 77. Yeah, I think Daphne may want to talk about this a little bit. Fourth and three, a long field goal attempt coming up. He moved the ball well on this drive, but got thwarted on second and short and third and three. And now I wonder if Coach Vickery is going to say, hey, do we want to take a shot at this one here as opposed to the long field goal? Earlier this week, they probably would have been aided by a win coming out of the north. The humidity was down and and we were having that sort of activity, but right now it's pretty still. Don't forget all season long, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Just search UTV44 High School Football Game of the Week on Facebook and UTV44 underscore GOTW. Facebook and Instagram brought to you by Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers. Jared Kehoff and crew, a great job to keep everything updated. On the social media side of things, got a big play here on fourth and three, and we'll see. Looks like now the Trojans going to decide to go for it as they bring Quinley back out, and McCullum in behind him. Coach Vickery changes his mind, and three receivers at the bottom of the screen Graves, Purdue, and Henderson. if they draw them offside, but uh, nope, not successful. Let's we'll see if they run a play. They will go for it. Quinley looking for single coverage to the near side, and it's incomplete. That one went in between Purdue and Graves, and the Saraland defense comes up with a stop on fourth and three. Got a couple of guys covering one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. They did their job, yeah. Aaron throw, and now West and Saraland back on the field offensively. I wonder... Maybe what we're going to see here tonight, kind of just a slugfest back and forth all night long. Yeah. No telling what we're going to see here tonight. <laughs> I'm excited to just watch it unfold. I want to say hello to a friend of mine, Scott Cooper, checking in, watching the game on UTV 44 tonight, sitting over in Baldwin County, enjoying this matchup. So Jack West gives it off to Nick Williams, and that one's Stretched out, no gain on the play. Jack Cushman did a good job following up there, just playing it inside out from that back of position. Pulling down. Williams last year, 869 yards and nine touchdowns. Jack West Vic talked about it last week in the Jamboree against Jackson, 15 to 21, 201 yards in the first half. Give this one off to Long and Long up the middle, and he's going to have a first down as he's across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Brandon Browers, who had the pick, did a good job to wrestle him down an open field. Yeah, yep, Browers didn't make that play. I think he's still running. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Not a bad tandem in that backfield for Sarah Land. It's long, cut it back here, and as Vic said, that's your safety, your last line of defense. Yeah. Took him on high, too. And we're going to get a heat timeout. 5.40 to go here in the opening quarter. It's scoreless Daphne and Sarah Land. They're on the Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers UTV 44 Game of the Week. You know, we were wondering what the atmosphere was going to be like, Dan Brennan. It's like we thought. It's yeah, great. It really is. Just Weather's good for the players. It is, yeah. I'll say okay for down here, but down this time of year, good, I guess. From the 37. This is long again. He's out across the 40. Pick up of a couple. The Daphne defense. D'Angelo Young, Davis McBride, and Locke. Trent Ellis is usually starting at linebacker with Onyx Brown out. Moves up to a linebacker tonight. Cushman had the big play on the first series. Mason there. Kid, Milton. 
and Richardson and Brandon Bowers who had the interception at the Daphne defense brought to you by Greers in second and seven after the long gain of three. It was Sean Long. It's not a long gain of three. We got you. West. Time. Floats it to the near side looking for Bellis Jones who had to go up and be like a DB and knock that one away because there was Tyreek Richardson that you highlighted in the pregame show. Yeah, Brennan. My guy, he didn't have much to say in the pregame show, but he he carries a big stick and he is a excellent cover corner right here. And again, Jack West throwing it off his back foot because he's getting a lot of pressure tonight. That's not the way David Morris or Jeff Kelly teaches you to step into a throw, but right now Daphne's bringing some heat, Vic. Yeah, and that's just causing him to be off balance and not, you know, do the mechanics that you'd like to see out of a quarterback. But he's trying to make a play, and he knows he's got a guy on the other end that will make a play in Bellows Jones. Third and seven, West holds this one to the near side. He's able to get it to Nick Williams, fights ahead to the 45, but he'll be short of the first down. Good open field coverage. Yeah. There by the Daphne Trojans. I was going to say, just how well is Daphne tackling so far tonight, yep. right? Fundamentally very sound. Williams could be a scary guy out in space. Nope. Not here, not now. Coming up to make the stop. Ellis and fourth and two coming up and Zach Everett on to punt. And Dan and I were watching him and talking to him, just booming them. I mean, this is a division one punter right yeah. here you're looking at. Yeah. When he when he really gets into one, you'll see what we're talking about. Tyrick Richardson back at the 15, like that. <laughs> he'll fair catch it, and he'll take it at the 17-yard line. I call that a B minus <laughs> for what we saw in the in the pregame. He was un, unreal. Yeah, those punters can be a weapon. They can uh, shift the field, and uh, you, if you can't shift the field, you kick it up high. That way, you don't have to worry about the receiver returning it. So. It's uh, definitely an important part of the team. So look what's going on here tonight. We see the games that took place last night. Jackson with a big win over Clark County, Millery and Southern Choctaw, Washington County and Linden, Theodore and Alma Bryant going on tonight down in the Bayou. Murphy and Baker, a big one in Westmobile this evening. Davidson and Mary G, Fairhope Foley, McGill Tulin on the road to take on Viger. Derek Scott making his coaching debut for Viger here tonight. You see the rest of the game, Spanish Ford and Gulf Shores. There's a bit of a rivalry uh, that's developed between those two, to say the least. But they're from opposite ends of the world. Yep. Quinley from the 17. Gives it off and nowhere to go as Batiste as Blake Heron with his second tackle of the night. Read that one well and comes up with a stop. These yep. kids pay attention in practice. Vic, yeah, huh? you know, I've seen that so far through the game. They're pretty sound and in their lanes correctly. And don't let these guys get the edge like they're trying, like they want to. If you defend the edge, you've got a chance on defense. Daphne's been a they, there. They've been a great team through the years. We've watched them of, of getting the edge, of getting mm -hmm. their, their speed people yep. in spaces where they can make big plays on short throws. Now they'll bring Brandel and Purdue in the backfield. Speaking of speed. And they'll get it to him, and he drops it. Well, a little, a little short on the throw. A little, a little short. It's going to bust tough. up his momentum a little bit. Yeah, tough when you're running to the outside. Yeah. The ball comes a little short. Yeah, he's going the other way. Now third and long, <laughs> deep in their own territory. Dan, he's going the other way, Dan. Get it to him. <laughs> Put it in front of him a little yeah. bit. High. Keep his momentum and speed going. Big game tonight here on UTV 44. Kelly Jones. Local 15 morning show. She's watching. Hello to Kelly, one of all of our favorites. And yeah. Glad she's enjoying the game tonight. Talented lady. Third and 15. Whitley steps up. Now wants to go over the middle of the field. He's got Purdue. Takes a big hit and holds on at the 43. And he's got the first down. And he is down. Well, what is the, the old cheer from way back when? Hit him high, hit him low. And that's exactly what they did while he was up in the air. This sure. is quite a hit on Purdue. Yeah, let's hope he's okay there. Well, nice job by Quinley. Wasn't that great? Just kind of moved around and kept his eyes downfield. That's what I like about quarterbacks. Let these other guys make plays. Like, he just climbed the ladder and went up there and caught the football for him, even though he's down. But uh, sometimes you're going to get caught in the air like that as a receiver. And I'm hoping it's just... Got the wind knocked out yeah. of him. Yeah, and it was, it was actually, he was only hit by one guy, but he was just, he just was somersaulted in the air. And that would be a case where you could definitely see a young guy losing, a, his, losing his air. Brian Metz, the trainer. And also the mayor of Sierra Land out there to check on him. He's also a physician. That's right. Yeah, so that's uh, good. We got the authority as, 
in terms of uh, politics as well as medical out there to take care of. Brian Metz, the trainer, longtime trainer here at Daphne. His wife, Stephanie, just checked in. She's watching the game from Daphne on UTV 44 tonight as well. I'd have to say we've got a large audience this evening. Oh, everybody wants a peek at this one. Up to the 44. Batiste in motion. Now they come in and go with kind of a wildcat quarterback as Tim Newman checks in. More of a little bigger banger there. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell yeah you. Nice little wrinkle by the coach. Uh, yeah, and I knew about Newman too. He, he's uh, transferred in. What does he look like at number 15? Huh? But uh, he's big, broad shouldered kid, and that's what they do with Newman. And he can wear you down. Newman. <laughs> They've got another Newman quarterback who's a sophomore who can really throw it. First and 15. They turn around and give it to McCullum, and he's got the first down to the 43 yard line. You know, McCullum's big in terms of, you know, thick, only about five foot eight, but also you can see that he's got some vision, Vic. He doesn't, he doesn't run into the wall. Exactly, yeah, you know, those short choppy steps like he takes allows you to redirect really quick. You know, if you're a long strider, you gotta get that long stride, then make a cut, but he's got those short choppy steps which gives him the ability to follow his eyes. There's a guy with those short choppy steps that I'm gonna make mention of here in just a moment. Inside two minutes, McCullum falls to the 39-yard line. The guy we saw years ago at Viger had short, choppy steps, and he was able to uh, kind of parlay it into a degree from the University of South Alabama. Kendall Houston mm -hmm. played a number of years for the Jags and a uh, very productive running back. Mm -hmm. Pick up a four for McCullum, and now they'll bring Newman back in. As we're down to a minute and a half to go in the opening quarter. Game living up to it. It's advanced billing. Daphne with the edge, edge in stats, though, right? Yep. Newman tries to get to the outside, lowers the shoulder, and he'll pick up maybe one. Third down coming up here for the Trojans. Pretty sound defense by Sarah Land again. So they've got pretty good fits when you when the first hold closes up and you try to check the second one, well, it's shut as well. Quinley comes back in. Newman is well padded up for contact. That almost is a giveaway as to right. what his plans are. <laughs> <laughs> right? Third and five. Daphne always gets a lot of players involved offensively. That's been another trademark we've seen over the years. A lot of looks. Quinley gets this to Batiste on the far side looking for a block and he's going to be stopped. And again, they're controlling the edge out there, Dan, not letting them get that outside. And then, you know, you think he's going to go outside and he then wants to turn it back in. Well, here, no, there's some more Spartans coming to tackle him. Boy, a lot of help on that play. That's what you want. You want the defense, everybody getting to the football. Coaches always talk about that run to the football. When you want to get in this get into the screen there when they're looking at film. Similar situation as we had last time downfield. Yep, it was fourth and three, and they were stopped. And they'll go for it again. The clock has not started now. They get the clock starting. Now some movement up front. Play clock inside 10. Fourth and three for the Trojans. Quinley steps up, looks from a column. He's hit immediately. And he'll be stopped again. Tanner Edge is the first one there. Yeah. I tell you what, they, they can play a little defense up here. They can. I mean, th this team is, is going to be physical. They're going to be in position to make plays. And they, they got a lot of uh, desire, too. This is, this exactly. Is a, this and is that's big. Hungry team. Sure. Two sure. fourth down stops here in the opening quarter. The epitome of bending but not breaking so yep. far. Yep. So far, yeah. And the Saraland offense really has kind of sputtered here in the first couple of possessions. Yeah, now. They're, they're not winning the line of scrimmage on offense, not so far. And West has been hurried. Every time he's dropped back to throw, yep. he'll try it again. Has some time to hit from the backside by D'Angelo. Young ball is loose, and Sean Long fell on it. Now it came loose again, and Dixon trying to get there. And there's a scramble over by the Daphne sideline, and Saraland has it second and forever. <laughs> Will come up to start the second quarter. Well, you barely got it off your tongue that he's being hurried, and then the next sec next passing situation, he's hurried here, and this time they catch him with his arm up in the air, and 
Onside Lord hit. Behold, the ball comes flying out, so they're very fortunate to be able to get back on it. And D'Angelo Young drive. knocked it loose. Dixon might have been the first one to fall on it. We're scoreless through one. It's been a banging game here in Sarah Land. We expect it all night long. as we start the second quarter on second and 23 west pass comes incomplete now third and 23 you know we're just talking in the break a little you know trying to figure out do you do you kind of ease your sophomore quarterback into it or, or baptism by fire and we got kind of both both opinions here in the booth well the defensive guy saying ease the quarterback in there you know he's gonna have him some years Call a few running plays like that, and uh, when you have to have a pass, third down, letting pass, third and 15, let's just run a draw and get out of there. Yeah, third and 23, you hand it off there, you know it's coming, but I mean, I think, you know, Dan, you, you're kind of thinking Coach Kelly has that longer vision than just tonight's game with the approach to it. Yeah, and I think what Vic is saying is the longer vision should be nurtured, mm -hmm. and I think in some ways, Jeff Kelly and this team is all about being tough, getting up. I don't think it breaks his heart every time that quarterback is challenged back there and has a tough play. Okay. I think he's like, well, this is it. Now you are the starting quarterback for Sarah Land High School. I trust Coach and Kelly because he's been with him longer than I have and much more. Yeah. But much, much more. I can't get into his mind, so Everett, I could be completely wrong. <laughs> Let's keep that in mind. Everett with a punt that rolls out of bounds at the 39-yard line. But the conversation I had with him, portions of it were about, and there's uh, Jeff Kelly right there has been so successful about having a young quarterback and how do you use this kid who appears to be special right mm -hmm. and uh, you know Jeff doesn't show you know his whole hand but I think part of it is your three-year-old has fallen off the tricycle you don't call 911 <laughs> yeah I got you and, and remember keep in mind guys coach Kelly has played it at his highest level exactly quarterback exactly I, I you know whatever he's doing so I am yielding to him hey, thank I, you I am just Providing uh, yeah. a little bit of my opinion. Yeah, I, I, and I, it's very that's why valid. We have, that's why we have you in the booth, Vic Lockett. <laughs> Your opinion is usually a lot more valid than mine. From the 39, McCullum. There's a flag that's going to be a hold. McCullum gets one. It's like a game being played in a phone booth so far, right? Not a lot of space. No. Out there right in the middle. Back up, Daphne. A lot of big gentlemen on the line of scrimmage for both teams. Yeah, usually when that flag is thrown in the middle of the field, got an infraction against one of the linemen. You get a bird's eye view of a hold. And it didn't gain much, it only had one. Didn't open up a big hole to, yeah. to run on there. And Not a good hold. Sarah and I'll take the penalty and back. Yard line, so or back to the 30 after the 10 yard walk off. First and 20. Quinley's look good, it really has. Well, I imagine so. A year off with uh, that coaching staff, and gonna get better. Looks to Brandlin. Brandlin Purdue goes off his hands, incomplete. That ricochet, dangerous. That usually means a pick, huh, Jim? Yes, right. Well, bubble screen, they were trying to get Purdue with some blocking to the center of the field and then see if he could kind of bust it out one way or the other. I thought the ball was delivered pretty well. Second and 20 for the Daphne Trojans. This one went down to the final play of the game last year. Big crowd here in Sarah and they get here early. And they put Purdue at quarterback and he gives this one off to Khalil Johnson for a game of just a few and third and long coming up. They get here so early that the vending department, when you first get here, they're still serving brunch. <laughs> <laughs> you have that option. And you know I almost <laughs> didn't make it in here with the traffic. Uh, how about so, it? Uh, yeah, one way in, one way out, yeah. right? Let's hope no disaster in here. Right. Third and 17. Quinley. Pressure coming. Tries to avoid it, fires it off wide open on the far side and some space is Dre Graves, but he gets only up to the 44 and fourth down coming up. What a play by Quinley. Yeah. yeah. He, hey, he knows who can make the plays and he says, I'll get it to you guy yeah. and just let you have the opportunity with yep. it here. Guy, all kinds of heat, 
Bryce. hanging all on him. He's draped over right there by a defender, but still has the wherewithal and the strength in his arm to get it out there to the foul and receiver. Bryce Hoven was there with the pressure. Big nose guard. Yeah. Another good tackle in space. Both these teams tackling very well. Marcus Reed, who started last year as a junior, came up with a stop that forces the punt. Belair, the left-footed kicker, great high kick. Bellis Jones calls for the fair catch back at the 16-yard line. And you're not going to miss the kicker with his line bright shoes. One of the uh, Coach Kelly, oh, of course not for that. You didn't get him for Seahawks. <laughs> I, anybody uh, you may expect this one to be scoreless with three minutes into the second quarter? Well, you know, it's so early in the season. What do we know about these teams? We're just learning, but I would say that the guess would be no. Somebody would have gotten in the end zone by now. From the 17. The guy going to USC, Bellis Jones. West looks over to the Sarah Land sideline. West looking for Bellis Jones, and he can't hold on to a good coverage. Tyrick Richardson. There's that talent we've been looking for right there. That was a very nice pass, very nice delivery. That's on the back end there, Velos would usually pulls that in, just didn't do that one. Stride for stride was Richardson with him. Boy, look at him, just naturally that kid lets that go, and that is actually just a drop on Jones. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's six right there. Yep. So you were talking about, are we surprised, no score? Well, we almost had our first right there. Sean Long back. In the backfield, he'll take the handoff right up the middle, and he busts a tackle, and he's going to have a first down for Sarahland out around the 28. They get, see, they get that running game cooking a little bit. Time for our trivia brought to you by New Horizons Tri uh, Credit Union. Name the four players from the state of Alabama that play the high school football here that have been selected number one in their overall draft. Four. Wow. Four of them. So lock it as one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're dead wrong. Uh, <laughs> you know. noodle, noodle that one through, and we'll uh, have that for you in the second half. First and ten, and a flag before the snap. Usually indicates against the offense. We're going to see this Daphne team next week as they open up the home portion of their schedule. The Blunt Leopards. Coming to town. A lot of purple on the field and Daphne that <laughs> night. And so far, you like what you see from Daphne. They kind of shot themselves in the foot when they, after some long drives. But if they're going to go one on one guarding Bellis, yeah. Bellis, Bellis Jones all night, you go there, huh? Yeah. You like that matchup. You look. Must from have been the just offense. Sideline warning against Daphne there. Okay. Must. Must have been. No penalty. West gives it off to Long and no running room. D'Angelo Young finishes him off, but there was penetration there by Wesley Locke. Young's I mean, had a good game so far. They're not standing up the offensive line of Sterling. They're getting past them. They are just creating some problems. On the other side of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're starting to play on their side of the ball right there, and that does does not work well. Trent Ellis for the offense. And Glenn Vickery, one state championship to his uh, resume back in 2010. He's won three of the last five region championships, including two of the last three as well. Second and 11. West will roll out. Has some time, comes to the near side, and incomplete. Unable to stay in bounds was Bellis Jones. I think it's worth uh, talking about, too, when you talk about Glenn Vickery. This, this Daphne program has changed from the fact that Spanish Fort High School came along in his term. Yep. So most of those players would also have been at Daphne. Yep. How good would they have been? Oof. Talk and, about some competition and, at practice. And Daphne probably would have been a 7-18 yeah. in the new yeah. oh, breakout no as doubt. well. No doubt. Third and 11. Keep an eye on the team in white pick and see if they bring some heat. They look like they want to. Yeah, no start. I mean, linebacker sticking his face up there. West going to pull it down. Cushman has a hold of the jersey and then grabbed him and forced him down at the 30-yard line. And another punt situation coming up. 
Yeah, it wasn't any uh, original heat on him from the linebackers, but he got caught in no man's land, and he said, well, I'll just come up here and tackle the quarterback since he's still got the football, and he gets him down. And brings up a fourth down. Zach Everett come on to punt. Tyreek Richardson. We've seen Daphne have Richardson back by himself, and sometimes they bring Purdue there as well, but they've been unable to return a punt from Everett thus far. And he'll punt it from the 15. Daphne should get good field position out of this exchange. Unless he really gets into one. Flag. Delay a game against the Spartans. Dead ball. Delay a game. Only off it. Five yard two and replay fourth down. I'll move Everett back to the 10. Richardson will move the 32. Scoreless here at Spartan Stadium. Our first trip here on UTV 44, and we're loving it. Daphne with 10 on the line of scrimmage. And they're coming. Everett with an end over end punt. Richardson Fair catches it at the 39 yard line, and that's where Daphne. We'll take over and let's go down to Ashley now and get our Alexandra Shannara Scholastic Athlete of the Week. We are here to award John Quinley of Daphne High School for the Scholastic Athlete of the Week. He is a little bit busy on the field right now, so we have his mom, Tasha. Tasha, just tell me, what does it mean to you to raise a kid that has just excelled in high school? Because right now we are showing everything that he's achieved on the TV right now. Oh, it's a blessing to be his mother. Um, He's been a great kid all his life. Um, doesn't get in trouble. I mean, here and there, but he's overall just a great son. He's one of four, he's my oldest, and so he's a great big brother and a great help to me. He's just been a, it's really a blessing to be his mother. So I have read that he is going off to college and being the oldest. What does that mean to mom, being leaving the nest? Oh, it's hard. I keep thinking this is the, you know, beginning of the end for, for high school. And um, I know that's part of life, though. you got to let them go and hope that you've taught them well enough that when they leave, they'll still keep the values you've taught them. Uh, so far, so good with John. Um, I think he'll do great. Well, on behalf of the Gulf Coast offices of Alexander Shannara, we want to give you this plaque for him and also a $250 scholarship towards his college. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the game. Thank you. Uh, and complete on second down there, so it'll bring up third down. Had a chance that one just a little bit behind Batiste. Well, if you're going to honor a kid, I think it's good to cut away and not show the air and throw. And, I, and, and we'll go back to Tasha because we want to hear about the here and there trouble, <laughs> troubled times that uh, he, that young John causes. No, fine, you. fine young man. Congratulations on yeah. his achievement as being the Scholastic Athlete of the Week and receiving the $250 college scholarship. And we'll get a heat time out here and third down and long. We've had a lot of those on both sides here in the first half. 531 to go scoreless here at Sarah Land. Scoreless here, halfway through the second. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett up in the booth. Quinley looks right side, fires incomplete. Had a lot of heat on that one. And comes up incomplete. And fourth down coming up here again. Both defenses really flexing their muscle here in the first half of this one. Just trying to get Miles Henderson in the pass behind him. And Valera will punt again, and Bellis Jones. We'll go back to three and out for the Daphne Trojans. Quinley put some heat on that ball, too. It just was in the wrong place. Bit of a high snap. Valera, another good point, punt, and Bellis Jones will watch that one. And wow, it takes a big Daphne bounce. All the way to the nine-yard line and a flag at the 23. That might be a block in the back that was kind of a odd contact point there as well. Well, things go bad on this change of possession for Sarah Land. They may get worse right there, and they do. Yep, it's going to be half the distance. Yeah. And I'll back them up to about the four. Well, if you want to have your quarterback 
challenged in his first game as a uh, first game as a, a varsity starter. Mm -hmm. You've got a great opponent in Daphne. You've got a sold out stadium. You've got a TV audience and you've got uh, some bad field position right now. And he's already been hit a bunch tonight. Yeah, I, I, we were talking about what a nurture. We're in the kick. We've got a block in the back on the red team. That's a post the kick violation. Be penalized from the end of the kick. First down. I just don't, Jeff Kelly seems to be somebody that's all about how do you respond. Mm -hmm. I think he's big on that. So he's not, you know, hey, it is what it is. Show me something. Yep. Try uh, the training wheels off. Huh? Yeah. I mean, he believes in this young guy. I don't think he thinks he's going to crack. He's a 4 4 student. He's a mentally tough kid. He's not just a, 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 a throwing arm. Long takes the handoff. He's up to the eight yard line. If you don't have those sort of traits, I don't think UCLA, Alabama, Cal, Stanford, Auburn offer you. You're right. Before you've started. So there's something already within this young guy before they ever snap the ball. He's got the moxie to, yeah. to be there. And he's gone and thrown for all the best in the country so far. Yeah. Great home structure. Got a great dad, Dr. Wes, up here. Fine, fine fella as well. Second and six. Rolls out. Flips this one up. And this is Williams. And he's going to step out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. To bring up third and short. There for the Spartans. We had that unusual breeze from the north earlier this week. I'm not a weatherman, but that's gone. We'll take it. <laughs> it's gone now, though. It's out of this booth, I will say that for certain. I think it's out of the area. Third and two. Here for the number three ranked team in 6A. Long squirts ahead, lost his shoe on the play, but he gets it out to the 25, and he's got a first down for the Spartans. He runs and catch up to his shoe, doesn't he? How about that? He lost his shoe, kicked it ahead, and ran hard enough where he ended up falling on his shoe about five yards down the, down the field. Watch this. Good blocking, too, Jim. Not only can you see the replay at home, you can see the replay here in the stadium with their big jumbotron. Yeah, they're using our feed here, which... Just adds to the ambiance of this special yeah. Friday night. Yes, it does. At the 25, West with a low snap, had trouble, and he's hit and dropped. Wesley Locke was in there and got him immediately. That one got all discombobulated when he dropped the snap. Yeah, no doubt, Ken. It's very easy when you non block and then they fumble the football. You just come on in there and collect that one. I'll take that sack. Thank you very much. Had that contract. <laughs> it's a uh, great job by West to hold on to that ball. Yeah. So this is what it's like to be the varsity quarterback. You know <laughs> In 6A. Right. Loss of eight. Second and 18. And now West rolls out, fires this one long throw to the near side. And Cody Nolan with his first reception of the night. He's back to about the original line of scrimmage. Rick, he's on the run all night. We haven't even seen this kid's be able to just set and throw except one time and Jones dropped what would have been a touchdown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's been hurried, no doubt about it. And I bet that is the plan from uh, Coach Vickery over there. Let's, you know, all the hype and all the talk about this young guy. Let's see what he's really about. Let's heat him up and put some real pressure on him. See how he reacts. Even at home and here in the booth and in, in the stadium, let's give it a whole game. Let's watch this thing through. Not judge one way or the other too quickly about either one of these teams or players. Third and ten. West looks to Jones, and that one, does he hold on? He does at near midfield. That's how you get Southern Cal's attention right there. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like I said, West is a good player, and he knows he's uh, got a receiver out there that'll make a play in Velos right there. One Committed hit. already to USC, so you know he's got some talent. I'm not talking about South Carolina. I'm yeah. talking about the Trojans out on the West Coast. One-handed catch, great body control in midair. And up to the 49. First down for the Spartans. Snap bounces back to West. Pressure coming. He throws and then skips that one short. I tell you, they're going to get him hurt if they don't get the snaps there. That's, you know, elementary stuff, but that's really been a problem. And once the snap gets there, you got to give him a little bit of protection. Yeah, but right now he's he's fishing for the snaps. <laughs> and he's not had a chance to establish a rhythm at all. No. And second and ten. 
You know, it's gonna be really fun. We watch him here in week one, and we're gonna get a chance to see Sarah Lynn later in the season here on UTV 44. And in just a few weeks against Spanish Ford, yep. right? And it'll be fun to watch him progress yep. as a sophomore. He goes under center, gives it to Long, crosses midfield, but not much else. Lost his helmet, and that'll blow the yeah. whistle in, and could be a face mask that ripped it off. Yeah, we want to stop the play if the ball carrier loses his helmet, for sure, protect these kids. Yep, and it's a face mask, and that's, you lose the helmet, that's usually the 15-yard variety. Well, look at how good-looking Long is there without his hat on. All right, you tell you, you see these kids without the helmet, you're like, oh, yeah, this is really a kid. Right? You know, it looked like yeah. it came loose, and then it was just kind of ripped off from the backside by Johnny Milton there. Mm -hmm. but nonetheless, all the way down to the 36-yard line. So about just a couple of years ago, that's the way I used to do my hair. I think you guys remember that. <laughs> you didn't have enough that way, too. <laughs> I'm questioning whether you had enough hair to do that, ever. <laughs> well, he said a couple of years ago. <laughs> He's back. All right, they're on the move to getting some help from, uh, from Daphne. Approaching two minutes to go here in the second quarter. West looks to set up the screen and going up to knock that one away with the good jump was Jerry and Mason, the senior linebacker. Yeah, get those hands up. If you're not going to make it to the quarterback, they teach you to stick those hands up, and he did just that to bat it down to no gain. This Daphne defense is stout, and they're active. Mm -hmm. I mean, they may be the strength of this team. But again, it's so early in the season, and everybody working things out, and we could have a completely different second half. Yeah, and their offense in the slouch either. They've got some yardage. Long up the middle. Young slowed him down, and he falls to the 34, maybe the 33. Third down coming up for the Spartans. Sean Long, 5'7", 180 pounds, 18 touchdowns last year. Almost 1,400 yards. It's a lot of touchdowns. It really is. Especially for a guy that shares, yep. shares carries. Third and seven. Ellis Jones to the bottom of the screen. West looks the other way. Now needs to scramble. Floats this one up, and he overthrows Nick Williams. Had some time that time. Yeah, Mason was kind of closing yep. in on him at the end of the play, but he stepped up here. Yeah, that caused him to go to about his third or fourth read there, and uh, just kind of tried to guide it into him and ended up overthrowing the little short guy. Yeah, yeah once, once the... Pressure was on, it was really on again. And Nick Williams at 5'8 there, 160 pounds. Not hard to overthrow him. It's the education of Jack West tonight. Mm -hmm. Fourth and seven. Those eyes are wide open. Yeah. Coach Kelly's going to take a timeout here. Uh, we'll keep it here with him as well. I've got a chance actually sit down with Jack and his, his mom and dad and, and obviously very well grounded. You know, a doctor, his dad's a doctor and, and they love the Sarah Land School District. They love the area. They love Coach Kelly and they love everything about the experience. I don't know that they're falling in love with what they've seen so far tonight with their young guy on the field, but I, I just think that he's one of these personalities and young men. Some people, you know, get beat down from something like this and I think he'll be the exact opposite. Yeah, I mean just like you said, he's got the perfect home structure. He's got a great head coach that was a quarterback mm -hmm. at his high level of coaching him. It's perfect. Perfect uh, situation. And, and great situation for the young man to succeed. Only thing I'm pointing out is that it is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Got it. Yeah, and going up against an outstanding team to open up the season as well. Sarah Land, Daphne, Spanish Ford, all last year, 7-1 and one in the region. And I think everybody expects much the same for those three teams this season. How many uh, teams are going to defend Sarah Land this well? Right. From the 33. Now they'll go four receivers. Ellis comes up from his linebacker spot to show blitz. Yeah, good job by Khalid Pratt to point him out there. Slow it down. 
West looks over the middle of the field, fires that one. It's tipped up, and Ellis goes up and can't hold on. Incomplete. That's a linebacker in coverage on Bellis Jones, but he's usually a safety. But a great job by Ellis dropping back to cover Bellis Jones. He did a good job. He's, he's going to be kicking himself when he comes back in and look at the tape on Sunday because he had a pick for sure right there. Just misjudged the football and give credit to Bellis Jones there becoming a defender on there as well. So Daphne comes with a fourth down stop on Saraland after Saraland did that twice in the first quarter to the Daphne Trojans. They have uh, had a number of plays where they've been excellent on Jones one on one. You know, the odds are at some point he's going to get you. From the 33, Quinley wants to keep it himself to the near side. Looks for a block. He'll get pushed to the near boundary at about the 37 yard line. And yeah, Demetrius Henderson did a great job there coming off the receiver and uh, coming and block, uh, tackle the quarterback after he recognized the run. Edge wound up finishing off the play and a gain of three. First time we've seen Quinley just pull it down. Quinley zips this one to the near side. Brandolin Purdue has got it and he's got the first down. Well, Quinley's showing this arm off now, isn't he? Yeah, he, uh, he's got a little cannon there himself. We saw the heater to the far side earlier, and that yeah. Yeah. had a good chance to look at it coming to the near side and stops the clock. And he's been through it. He has been the quarterback for an entire season of a high-level program. That's not easy. That's not easy. Right. High-level program, high expectations. Exactly. Well coached over there, though. At the 46, Quinley sprints out, flips this one, nearly intercepted his... That went off the hands of Blake Heron, the linebacker. Yeah, he had one there for sure. They get the quarterback on the move right here, and he's got his head downfield. And right there, you thought that was the easy pick there. Climbed the ladder to go get it, just didn't finish it off. Good look at Blake Heron, 5'10", 185 pounds, senior. Second and 10 for the Trojans with 38 seconds left. And so they're going to have second and five. Hoven is the hard count. Got Hoven to jump. Hoven was a starter on this team that, as we said, lost in the state championship game last year. Now in the back of your mind, if you're Daphne, you may be thinking field goal. You know, a long shot to get it down to the 25 or so. Yep, got a couple of timeouts left. Quinley steps up and able to get Purdue on a little crossing pattern at the 40. Purdue makes a move, and he's got more inside the 30, tripped up at the 28-yard line. He can be troublesome. Yeah, he lost his balance there. Uh, even though he broke through the tackle there, if he would have kept his footing, he may be still running there. Nice job again by Quinley just sitting there and letting him become totally uncovered. All kinds of green grass in front of him. Catch the ball, heads up field, loses his foot in there, and falls down. They stop the clock with the new with the first down, but a timeout taken by the Saraland defense with just 28 seconds left. But Daphne has moved it down to the 28-yard line. Saw the danger of Purdue when he gets it in some space there, and as Vic said, just kind of got. Lost his footing after he made the move. Yeah, and as Vic also said, that was a lot of space. I mean, the defense was really set back deep. The middle of the field was wide open, and the last guy that Sarah Land wants to see get the ball in a spot like that is probably the guy that had it. <laughs> How about the field here, the turf that they have at Sarah Land? It's not, it's a different type of turf than, say, at Ladd Stadium, mm -hmm. but it's more of like a bent grass, if you will. Yeah. It's a, it's a longer blade of grass but it's laid over as opposed to just you know the yeah. standard grass that stands straight up great looking turf now you're getting way too technical <laughs> about this thing hey we'll let's get, just get a rectangle with 110 yards and dot the lines off and play we'll get it we'll get the stint meter out there and <laughs> read it a little bit later on you want to give us the chemical components of it later that I cannot do. <laughs> At the 28, we'll call it the 29 with 28 left here in the first half. Scoreless in a 6A Region 1 matchup here tonight in Sarah Land, Daphne. And now Glenn Bicker is going to have to take a timeout. Did not like the alignment. 
Yeah, somebody didn't line up in terms of formation correctly on offense, and uh, he's upset that he had to burn that time out because they were definitely not in the formation he wanted. Boy, that's a costly burn of one there after coming off a timeout that Sarah Land had just taken. Yeah, Sarah Land gave him one. By taking a timeout, Sarah Land defense, they kept uh, the Trojans from burning one, but it, right out of that timeout, they do it themselves. It's a little warm out there, guys. A little warm up here, I'll say as well. Yeah. One timeout left for the Trojans here with 28 seconds left. The, the, the picture of the crowd beyond the fence toward the field house and toward the concessions. Yeah, I was about to say there's food over there as yeah, well. So you can count for the folks like myself. Yeah. I mean, it's a. I want to go get in that line. There are people every, everywhere surrounding this field. Jim, can I get a hot dog timeout <laughs> or two? 28 seconds, 28 seconds until Lockett gets to eat. <laughs> <laughs> the artist Batiste in next to Quinley. Graves in the slot. Fires over the middle. He's got Purdue inside the 10. First and goal. Trojans, they'll stop the clock to set the chains. What did you see right there? A little bit behind him, but Quinley got it done because he's got a receiver out there that just makes a place. You know, sometimes it's not going to be perfect. Trojans are in the Papa John's delivery zone. Use promo code RIVALS to get two large pizzas, two large toppings for only $7.77 each, and they'll just dirt it. You know, that's what I've heard in some media reports about Julio Jones. He's the best bad ball catcher. And uh -huh. right there, that receiver had a bad ball, but yep. he's still able to reach behind him here. Watch Brandon look and at Purdue. Yeah, yeah, just make the play. Sometimes your quarterback, he's under duress. He just can't put it where all the time. If it's a yard in front of him, it's a touchdown. Yep, exactly. And now they'll put Purdue at quarterback and Quinley, the quarterback, out to wide receiver. One time out. Quinley goes in motion. Purdue will go the opposite way. Brandle and Purdue, touchdown Trojans. You want to call it a little trickeration? Man, in this direction. Daphne gets their best players in space about as well as anybody we watch. Coach Vickery. Yep, year in, year out. But they've got speed. And they, they usually do. Yep, and they usually do, and they usually do everything in their power to use it against you. Have talent, we will get you the ball. Misdirection, Sarah Lynn just slanting the wrong way, and Purdue easily in the end zone. Varela with the point after, and it's 7-0. Daphne with a late touchdown here in the first half. Brandel and Purdue, second time we've seen him come on the Wildcat, and they put the quarterback, Quinley, in motion. Drew the coverage that way, and Purdue had an easy waltz into the end zone. Yeah, all eyes on, on the quarterback. The quarterback in motion, a receiver that play, and that was the misdirection that kind of doomed Sarah Land. Well, as a defender, you know, you're used to keeping your eye where that quarterback goes because, you know, nine out of ten times where he goes is where the football goes. Uh, second guy to touch it every play. So, uh... Certainly got the defense that time. Just got a text here from, I'll tell you in a second, the Aaron score in some way. Five plays, 77 yards for a minute 10. The senior quarterback, Quinley, leads him down the field. And that was Brandel and Purdue who went in for the touchdown there. Just got a text from Jim Russo and Daphne watching the game here tonight. He's happy about that touchdown. Also celebrating a birthday tonight. Watching well, a little happy UTV Happy birthday, 44. Mr. Russo. Yep. Save me a piece of cake. 13.7 <laughs> seconds. Left Barella. Fires this one down the sideline, and that one stays inbounds and all the way back to the one. And picked up by Bellis Jones, and Jones gets a block on the near side from Nick Williams, and Jones across the 30. Still on his feet. Four seconds to go, and he's pushed out of bounds with one. Oh, wow, they let the clock run all the way out. There was about 1.9 seconds left on the clock, but they let it run out. Yeah, you take a look at it here. He's just trying to make a play. I thought it was ill-advised, but uh, he turned it into something. Williams with that great block in front. And then you can see he gets to the far side and 
I really thought he had more time, but the official lets the clock run out here. No protest by Coach Kelly. He's just like, let's just go to the half. As we wait for Ashley to catch up with Coach Vickery. And she has got him, and let's go down for an orthopedic group sideline report from Coach Vickery. You were able to score before the half with 13 seconds left. What does that mean to your team and going into the third quarter? Well, it asked me at the end of the game. It means a lot right now, and by the end of the game, I hope it means a lot as well. But you know, I think it gave us some confidence and momentum, obviously. And, you know, it, it's you know, sometimes you play the seven points down, seven points ahead. We got to go play better defense. So we, defense has really played well overall. Offense, we got to move the change. So you know, we're excited to score now. We, we got to come back, and you know they, they're capable of scoring a lot of points. We got to we got to play consistent. But the first half was a good football game. We got to do better on offense. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Glenn Vickery happy with that late touchdown there to put his team on top by a score of 7-0. With the end of tonight's game, we'll have three players of the game that will nominate for the player of the game award. And last week, Miller Mosley, quarterback for the St. Paul's Saints, and He's been nominated a lot, and I think each time we do St. Paul's, if they win, he's probably going to get the nod there, too. Had a nice game with his feet and, of course, with his arm, too. Very efficient. Yep. Miller Mosley, senior quarterback. We watched him grow. He started as a sophomore. Accurate. Great leader. Going to the Air Force Academy. Air Force Academy. This was a touchdown. Yeah. Early on that gave the Saints some breathing room there. And at the end of tonight's game, Advanced Collision will give you a chance to vote on the player of the game. We'll have three choices for you. And Miller Mosley, senior quarterback. I'm thinking John Quinley, senior quarterback, probably going to be one of those here possibly tonight as well. Thanks to Reverend Michael Brown, the uh, cousin of Tank Brown, who texted us to me just moments ago watching the game. Winning the Tank Brown Award each and every week, the player of the week does. It's halftime here. In Saraland, it's the Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers Game of the Week on UTV 44, and the Trojans have the lead at the half. Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers Game of the Week here on UTV 44. It's been a good one so far. 7-0, Daphne on top at the half, and let's go down and enjoy the Pepsi halftime show.
It's a good one so far here tonight in Sarah Land 7-0. Daphne has the lead. We enjoyed the Daphne band here on the Pepsi Halftime Show. Now
Phillips injury lawyers UTV 44 game of the week and boy it has been just that to start with this one off 7-0 Daphne leads Sarah Land here at Spartan Stadium in the home crowd trying to rile their boys back up to get this one going here in the second half what an exciting first half of football Dan Brennan yeah, a lot of defense too it's all about defense it's Daphne team solid on the defensive side and then of course they get the late score to get the lead I know Vic Lockett you love defense and we certainly did see it I think uh, surprise you know Daphne got the late touchdown there but I think we're both a little surprised how much they've come out and really shut down the Sarah Land offense yeah I mean they've you know been a little bit but and broke just one time with the touchdown but other than that it has been good nice tight game I'm loving it Sarah Land will get it to start the second half High kick to the far side. This one may hit the ground. Instead, grab at the 30. This is Nick Williams, and he comes all the way across the field, runs 50 yards, and gets knocked out of bounds. Doesn't gain much more. Yeah, try to cross the field against Daphne. Not easy. Never has been. You got some folks that can run, don't they? Yeah. Team full. They did not. Here's the stat or the highlights in the first half. This was big hit, and that was. Brandon Bowers coming up with the interception, starting at safety here tonight. And a lot of big hits and pressure. That was D'Angelo Young. He'd been in there a bunch. And then this young man, Wesley Locke, comes in. makes it. They're going to start calling Wesley Lockett making <laughs> sacks like that. And Don't embarrass the kid. Brandolin Purdue at the Wildcat comes in, scores a touchdown with 13.7 seconds left to give the Trojans the lead. You see 156 yards of total offense, 2-1. to one for Daphne to Sarah Land here in the first half, and the Spartans will pick up a couple. Quinley in the first half, 9 of 17 for 115 yards. Purdue, five receptions, 97 yards. Kind of a quiet 97, I would say, in the first half yep. there, but West just 4 of 13 for 40 yards, and he has been under duress all evening long. But the sophomore quarterback here at second and six. Gives it off and more pressure. D'Angelo Young again in there a well and makes the stop. And let's go down and get another sideline report from the orthopedic group. Ashley. I caught up with Coach Kelly coming out of the locker room, and he said that his team just needs to execute more. He knew Daphne would show strong defense against them, and that is what they have done. He said there's two quarters left to perform for his team. Third and eight from the 33. Daphne's defense picking up right where they left off. Winning the, line of, winning the line of scrimmage. Now they're coming Tyreek Richardson on a blitz, and they go across the middle, and Cody Nolan's got it. He fights forward, and he's got the first down. Make that Cannon Stroud the tight end with his first reception of the season, and he's got the first down, a big third down completion for Jack West and the Spartans. Yeah, you called it and seen it. They came with blitzes on the first two plays. Daphne has out of the locker room, and they're going to continue to keep the heat on this young quarterback make him earn everything he can get. West comes under center. Pitches it out. Sean Long, uh, Long got away from Cushman, the sophomore, and he's got a first down to the 42-yard line. That looked like that was going nowhere, but yeah. the senior running back made it happen. Well, you know why it looked that way? Because <laughs> it was going nowhere. <laughs> this team, though, plays with a tenacity, and I think here in the second half, there's no telling what was said at halftime, right? Tenacity might have been uh, used to describe the conversation that was taking yeah, place. Yeah, might have been some tenacious uh, words thrown around in there. At the 39 on the first time tonight, we've really seen a little rhythm coming here, and they go right back to Long, and a big hole on the left side, and he's got another first down and more, and he's down inside the 20, and it's first and 10 Spartans. All right, now that is shaping up under the philosophy of what I was seeing a little bit earlier. Let's get these backs going a little bit, and let the quarterback just kind of get a feel for big-time ball. You got a big-time back here, looks like, Dan. Yeah, but you got a block, and here in the second half, they're actually opening up some holes when the first half, they, they weren't. Yeah. Ellis made the stop, and now the Spartans are in the Papa John's delivery zone and Long slips to the right side, cuts it back inside the 10, all the way down to the six yard line. The ball come loose, it did come loose. Wow, that ball, you can see the Trojans trying to strip it loose. Yeah, I thought he got it out before he got to the ground, but uh, apparently not. 
Let's take a look here, Sean Long. Boy, he's really shown some effort here, but the thing about televised high school football, you get to see the whole play, right? And he, down. Was, he was down, and great he was call down. by the officials. Johnny Milton was in there trying to strip it away, but first and goal from the six. Now Nick Williams change of pace back, and he's trying to get to the outside edge, and Nick Williams has got a touchdown for the Spartans. Yeah, Coach Kelly's calling more run plays as opposed to pass plays. That drive, you got to give it to him, man. But you saw the, the rhythm take place. You saw him be able to get some of that flow going. Well, you saw blocking. You saw blocking on the offensive line and Daphne now on the other side of the ball, where in the first half, Daphne's defensive front was so dominant. Brian Dixon with a good block to free him there. You like Brian Dixon talking to yep. him before the game, right? Yep. Justin Harper with a PAT, and we are tied at seven. Sarah Land scoreless in the first, but they need 252 to start quarter number three to tie this one up at seven. The Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers Game of the Week is just that. It's the Game of the Week here on UTV 44. This one certainly changed quickly to start the third quarter. Yeah, well, you said it, what, two minutes and 52 seconds? Vic Lockett saying keep it on the ground. I think it's great to be on the ground if you can if you can move the change on the ground. In yep. the second half, they've uh, opened some holes. Harper to kick off. Brandlin, Purdue takes it right at the 20. Purdue tries to go the far side, and he's upended coming up. To make the big stick. Sarah Land playing inspired. Wydell Flott starting cornerback on special teams as well. Comes up there and just makes a great tackle. Takes his feet right from under his shins. Now we'll see Daphne right at the 20 start things off. Coach Kelly. Offensive line, right? Yep. Now we'll see the senior quarterback who's played so well tonight, John Quinley, for the Daphne Trojans. Gives it off. McCullum right up the middle, and he'll get two. Wasn't a lot there. The hole quickly closed down as Blake Heron in there to help on the stop. One officially. Now Batiste comes in the backfield with Quinley. Quinley looks, fires that one off, and Dre Graves has the reception out to the 27-yard line. Third down coming up. We'll so bring nothing, in, nothing, excuse me, Jim, go ahead. Now just to bring in Newman here as the Wildcat quarterback. Our last two possessions, we've had touchdowns. After that long drought. You're right. Neither team able to punch it in. Now third and three. Jackson Newman, the banging quarterback. He's going to keep it right up the middle and lunges ahead. And he's going to be short of the first down. Yeah, he is armored up. <laughs> Ready to... Looks like Barry Bonds coming up to bat. <laughs> <laughs> He's big before you put on the armor. Yeah, I was about to say, and Barry Bonds don't have a pad on other than his helmet. <laughs> oh, man. Fourth and one, and this will bring out the punt team. Varela to punt, and Bellis Jones back at the 33. He can change things in a hurry. High good kick. This one's going to bounce. Jones, is he going to take it? He does at the 25 and sprints right up the middle. Jones breaks a tackle up to the 40. Stays in bounds up the near sideline. Bellis Jones into Trojan territory. Shows out why those folks from the West Coast want him, huh? Yeah. It's a long way to come to get a player, but you can see why. You think they'd have enough guys out there in L.A.? Uh, not like they don't make them like they do down here in the South, Dan. <laughs> I promise you. Vic Lockett, you know what Bellis Jones has? What's that? Skinny ankles. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? And he'll scoot with them, too. To the 44-yard line for the SC commit. 
And what you guys are witnessing here, an inspired offense, inspired the defense, even the special teams are yep. inspired. So let's see if they can maintain this right now and it's not just a flash in the pan. I think there was some inspiring going on at halftime with Coach Kelly and his staff. Yeah, I imagine they so. They addressed this team. Yeah, I imagine so. Jack West under the senior, under the junior center. Hasselberger who started last year as a sophomore at guard. Long to the 40. He doesn't want to quit. No, he's been tough, especially here in the second half. Another thing they've done. They put West under center, whereas yeah. in the mm -hmm. first half he was in shotgun a lot, and that just was going haywire from the snap. You know, you talk about West not having a great first half. Well, if the snaps are poor, you're, right. you're probably not going to have a good first half. Yeah, Jim did point that out in the first half, that the snaps were not getting back there crisp. They put Bellis Jones in the slot. Up to the top of the screen, second and six. West pulls it down, lost the football. Football is loose and recovered by the Spartans. Pocket broke down quickly here as Locke was coming in. And there's Young again. And they've got both those outside linebackers on a Cobra all night. I mean, just coming hard, not even dropping in the coverage just to put some heat on the young quarterback. Got there again that time and forced him up in the middle of the pocket and he forgot he had the football. Third and nine after the loss. Even an obvious, or you can say, uh, presumed passing down. West, I think it's worth noting, under center. West looks, floats this one wide open and unable to hold on was the tight end. Cannon Stroud, that one thrown a little high. If he puts it on the numbers. Hey, and give credit to Bowers back there because it was on his fingertips and Bowers delivered a blow to say, finish it. Nope, you're not going to catch that one. Just had his body turned a little bit. It wasn't that high. It was just kind of yeah, misjudged like, it a bit. West was throwing down the field. And the tight end was coming in a little bit. It, it looked like uh, trying to run a little bit of a post. Or yeah, yeah, right. Officials timeout here. They're going to take the heat timeout with five and a half to go in the third. 7-7 seven, seven our score. It's the game of the week on UTV 44. And Phillips Injury Lawyers Game of the Week here on UTV 44. It's a great one so far. Daphne and Sarah Land all knotted up at sevens halfway through the third. Zach Everett here to punt and Tyrick Richardson at the 10. Ready to receive this one. Everett trying to angle it to the corner. And that one goes out of bounds. Great punt by Everett. That's going to be inside the five, and they're going to down it at the one-yard line. We talked about his booming punts before the game, but yep. he directionally kicks that one, had the nose of the football down to get the high hop, placed it out of bounds at the one. It just took a right-hand turn at the one-yard line. <laughs> and let's go back down to Ashley now for the Faulkner State Community College Educator Spotlight. I am with Jared Gilliland, a teacher at Daphne High School. You are actually Coach Gill of the Broadcast Journalism Department at Daphne. Just tell me a little bit about your program. Uh, <clears throat> the Broadcast Journalism Program is kind of a new thing for Daphne, um, but we're trying to start it from the ground up and really give kids the experience they need to be to succeed professionally in any field. Uh, learning how to work with different type personalities and, and different situations, it's, it's a really great experience so far. So it pretty much gives students, you know, a look into what they may want to major in in college. Oh, yeah, definitely. It, it gives them real-world experience. Uh, they can really grab hold of, of what they might do when they go to college. So it gives them some serious, tangible ideas about what they're going to do when they leave high school. I know you have some students back here watching us tonight. You know, it just kind of shows them, do they really want to do what we do every day? Yeah, no, you're right. They're, they're excited. They have a lot of fun with it. They, I mean, you can just see, you know, their eyes light up when I say, okay, you can come up with a new segment or, or hey, it's your turn to be on camera or to be behind the camera or whatever. And they're just like, okay, you know, can we do this? And their minds are just creating, you know? So it's really awesome to see that. That is awesome. Well, thank you very much and good luck. Oh, thanks for having me. Cullum with a great eight yard run on first down. And now he's going to have the first down to get him out of the shadow of the goalpost there. 
Yeah, give them a little breathing room there. A couple of run plays with success. Uh, so they, let's see, kick the sticks, got a first down, so they'll refresh that and give them some room. Looks like we... Sarah Land player a little slow getting up, but... Uh, yeah, that's Marcus Reed, the two-year starter. Is up. Looks like that would hope just one of those stingers, Vic Lockett. Yep, yep. <laughs> Looks like he's got something going on up there in the upper body. Prayerfully, he's A-OK. -okay. Billy Powell comes in to replace him. With 4.36 left in the third. This game was scoreless until 13 seconds left in the first half. Daphne scored. Then, as Dan Brennan said, Sarahland came out in the second half, and they scored. 7-7, seven, seven, that's where we're at. First and 10 from the 14. Quinley fakes. Now, he has all kinds of time. The senior quarterback wants to air this one out to Brandel and Purdue, and it's just a yard overthrown. What a pass. Wow. Nothing, almost a great completion. I'm telling you, nothing wrong with Quinley's arm. No, he is uh, got a cannon himself. Uh, just good defense right there. Did not allow that to be a reception. Touch more air, and Purdue's able to run underneath that one. Oh, yeah. Great throw. Man. Great throw. Pretty to watch, huh? Yep. Talented young guys. That it took some lumps as a as a junior. Call. You know, yeah. still led him to a great region record, but yeah, I think that was great play selection because he had two successful runs to get the first down, and you're probably thinking they're gonna run it again as a defender. Nope. Sit back yep. here and air it out. Got a quarterback with that arm, yeah, Purdue, who can stretch the field and take some shots every now and then. So Penley prior to the snap against the Trojans will be Second and 15 now back to the nine yard line. Years ago was Glenn Vickery who kind of mentioned that to me. Just kind of put it in my ear talking about a quarterback that he had. This was years back and saying, you know, he's the quarterback at Daphne High School. That's not that easy. You're right. Far side complete. You know, in, a, in a city like Daphne where the football team is everything, you're constantly critiqued. Yep. And, and like Vic said earlier, expectations very high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For that program. Over there. Pickup of 10 on second down. Purdue was forced out of bounds on the far side in third and five. Here for the Trojans. McCollum up the middle trying to bounce it to the outside, and he's not going to get there. Blake Heron, the linebacker, who's played really well tonight for the Saraland team to make the stop and got some help from Bryce Hoven. Yeah. yeah. Hard nosed kids in, in, in red, Vic Lockett. Yeah, yeah you, you, know. you could see just what you talked about the tenacity, the want to, uh, the drive. If you've got kids like that, you can win some football games. Yeah, and I, I think they've got more of that drive here in the second half, Jim. Yeah, I think we, we talk about that so much. You know, uh, Blake Heron, 5'10", 185 pounds, just yeah. high school linebacker. You got it. Who gets out here and plays his tail off every Friday night. So as we get a timeout here with 3.30 left on fourth and six. Just want to make sure they've got some good execution. Don't need to have any kind of turnovers right here. Timeout was called by Sarah Land. Maybe they didn't have enough people on the no, field. I was thinking, like the, thinking the same, same thing. Well, it's been fun. First time in Sarah Land, huh? Yeah, I mean, great, great atmosphere. As we certainly thought, beautiful stadium. Great vibe when you walk in. Like Dan said, the folks were here having brunch, <laughs> getting ready for getting ready for this one. You know, throw out some jokes from time to time, but that was real. And by the way, got a text from uh, my partner in the morning on KHJ, Shelby. Yep. Oh, hey, Shelby. She said, uh, <laughs> "My friend, looks like, looks like a bigger crowd than Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. It doesn't hold that much, but uh, it is a turnaway crowd tonight." For well, sure. the only thing we are missing is Shelby. You got? Oh, I thought you were going to say Trump. <laughs> no, we could pass on that. <laughs> Bellis Jones back at the 43. Valera inside his own five. He too gets a great punt off. And that one will be down at about the 43 yard line. And let's go down back to Ashley again and check in with here for the Scholastic Athlete this week. Brought to you by the Gulf Coast offices of Alexander Shannara. I have Claire Copeland from Sarah Lynn High School. Claire, reading through your resume, wow. You have been an amazing student. Thank you. How does it, you know, how do you do it every day being, you know, the class president, cheerleader, basketball starter? 
Well, I have amazing teachers and um, coaches that have helped me throughout my years at Sarahland. Um, they've always encouraged me to, to be at my club organization meetings, to be able to finish my homework on time, and they've always supported me throughout the athletic rooms of the uh, high school. So I'm just thankful for them and the amazing faculty at Sarahland High School. I couldn't do it without them. As a senior cheering out here tonight, you have freshmen, you know, up there in the stands. What's some advice that you would give a freshman to excel and, you know, to go on to what you're going on to, the University of Alabama next year, for example? Um, the advice I would give to a freshman would be to always do your best. For me, I kept Christ first, and I was successful in everything I've done. So I definitely go for what you want and, uh, and just work hard at everything and don't give up. And that's what I've done for the past four years in my high school. Well, congratulations, and on behalf of the Gulf Coast offices of Alexander Shannara, this is a plaque presented to you also Thank with you. a $250 scholarship for you to use for college. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Second and six for the Spartans. West has some time. Wide open on the far side. He's got Sean Young at the 10. There's a flag. Young in for the score, but there's a flag back at the 44-yard line. Yeah, may have got him again for lineman downfield. You know, that play took a minute to develop, and those guys get anxious. So we'll see what the call is definitively. Yep, the initial call is that. Why is the lineman going downfield on a play like that? Man? Well, you know, because it was a bit of a misdirection, and then the defense uh, kind of peeled off, and the lineman was just standing there. So, you know, we're taught to go to the whistle blow. Guy it. gets anxious and running a little bit. He takes, you know, four or five steps, and there he is. He's yep. in a penalty zone. Trying to play and had an ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Yeah, I got news for you. That's no five-yard penalty. Yeah, that's a six-yard, <laughs> a six-point. <laughs> net, net, no. Penalty. Yeah. But, you know, it's just tough, you know, for those linemen. You know, you know, you're know, just not used to standing around, you know, and while the play is going on, you don't put your hands on your hips, so. They just get a little antsy and edge up feel a little bit. Want to go continue to play and go give a block to somebody. And, yep, can't go down there too early. Though. The education of Jack West. More of that. Handling disappointment. Second and 11. West steps up. Flips this one out. Young gets just back to the line of scrimmage. That was it on that one. Yeah, good intentions. Just uh, not real positive. I, don't even, I didn't even know if he completed it there. He, he just did. under so much pressure again. I mean, they're just covering these linebackers on the edge out there, not even at all sending them out for a pass drop that I've noticed. Picks up one third and ten. If they can get them blocked just like that, you know, the flats are open because these outside linebackers they're are coming. coming. Yeah. About the job Tyrick Richardson has done on Bellis Jones here tonight. Had one on pregame show and Coach. Talked about it, and here it is on this side. It was one up and complete to Bellis Jones at the 30. Just as we talk about that, and they get the single coverage and a great ball thrown by West to drop it in Bellis Jones in mid-stride. Yeah, again, let's watch the whole game before we come to any conclusions on any of this. Yeah, did you see his head kind of look the other way to kind of make the ooh. safety wait? Well, he's tight over there on the sideline to get, get his foot in. Yep. Is he in bounds on that one? Yep, I did that fair question. There's no replay in the booth, so they reset the ball, so it was complete in the books. At the 30, Williams comes around and takes the handoff. There's another flag. Williams up the middle of the field, makes a move. He's going to go in, but this one, too, will be wiped off the board. Holding. Yeah, they hadn't ran the jet sweep all night, have they, Dan? No, but you got to be in the shotgun to run that thing, and they were, they went ahead. I think they were afraid to do it because that would cause you to be in that shotgun formation, and the snaps have been bad. Mm -hmm. So here in the second half, I'm surprised we ever saw that because they've had a lot more success with West under center. All right. Tim D's our referee. i tell you what, Tim D's ain't taking no stuff out of this home crowd, is he? Or home team. I, I've always liked the way he calls the game. Really gets a good, always has a good handle on the game. Yeah. Whenever we see him here on TV, and you know, I, I don't think wasn't a lot of protest from Jeff Kelly on that one. Right there, 66, big oh, handful of jersey. Some, yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you go. And Jeff Kelly was looking right at that. Yeah. 33 turned into three there. Two touchdowns taken off the board on this drive due to penalties. One 
An eligible man downfield, and that one a holding call. And, and it was the right call. Yep, it was. So back to the 44-yard line. Well, let's see what they try to accomplish here. Give it to Long up the middle, and he stumbles to about the 36. And will bring up second. About 16. I think the progression of West is going to be so enormous so quickly. Uh, it would not shock me at all. And I think I think this baptism under fire, Kelly knows his quarterback. He yep. knows the young man. I, I think it's going to benefit him quickly. West drops away back all the way to the midfield line, gets it off to Nick Williams, and Williams is slung down for a gain of one. Yeah, Tyreek Richardson, that's just great defense right there all the way around. But Glenn Vickery talked about, you know, Tyreek Richardson, 5'8", 150, was nominated as an All-State player yep. last year. How about that? Yeah, talked to him, started as a junior, talked about, you know, how much he's a great cover corner, but he said his compete level is just off the charts, and, and we see it. And he said very little less in the pregame, but the one thing he expressed was, I really like to compete. Yep. <laughs> That's his strength, right? Third and 15. Way to go, Tyreek. Pitch it out. Now he'll give it back off to Williams, trying to come around the far side, and he gets tripped up as Trent Ellis, the linebacker, comes up and gets a hand on the foot to bring him down to stop him on what looked like it was going to be a big game. Well, West goes at the block. I thought he might have been going out for, for a to receive a pass. Oh, okay. And right. thought he was going to pull up. But, yeah. uh, no, he was under pressure there by Trent Ellis. And uh, just good defense again by the uh, Daphne guys there. We are through three on the Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers. Game of the week here on UTV 44. It's a good one. 7-7, seven, seven, fourth and 14 coming up to start the fourth. to start the fourth here at Spartan Stadium. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lock, and Ashley Pope in the sidelines. Brian Aaron is not here tonight. In his absence? Yes. But we have Brian Anderson filling in. Jared Kihas in the truck. Fourth and 14 from the 34. West has time. Looking to the near side. Fires complete inside the 10. He's got Stroud. And it's first and goal. Spartans and the sophomore shows something on that one. Yep, throws across, you know, the, the, the whole pattern. Everybody looking at Jones flying down the right side, Vic. Yeah, let me tell you, when you've been told they're going to run this play on defense, it is tough to cover. Just coming all the way back against the grain, one-man route coming back. You got to have some discipline in defense to do that. Spartans in the Papa John's delivery zone. Use code RIVALS. Get two large pizzas, two toppings for only $7.77 each. A couple of sevens on the board as well right now. And the Spartans trying to block that one, looking for their first lead of the night. Give this one to Long. And doesn't gain much on the inside. Second and goal coming up. Well, Long's a quick little spinner there, too, boy. Like a little spinner dolphin. <laughs> He's tough between the tackles, too. He has made some runs, especially here in the second half, where he has gone right into the contact. Yeah, and on that first drive that ended up looked like nothing was going to happen, yeah. broke it for a big one. Right. They led, led them down to get the score, and he'll stay in at tailback here. West gives it right back to him, trying to get around. D'Angelo Young breaks the tackle, and another, and he's in for the touchdown. That's what you were talking about, the tenacity and the want to out of this group. D'Angelo Young had a clean shot on him there. And Young's had a great game at defensive end. Yeah, that, containing the pressure there. But Young just kept his legs driving. Spartan tenacity embodied by that guy here in the second half for sure. That time the line did not give them anywhere to go. Did not win the battle at the line of scrimmage. And he said, you know what, I can see the end zone from here. And I want to get there. Uh, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Justin Harper on for the kick. And Sarah Land has their first lead of the evening at 14-7. Sean Young with a touchdown, breaks one tackle, and then two, and three, and he's got six. Fourth 
15 unanswered here in the second half for Sarah Land to lead at 14-7. And Dan, you talked about it, you know, late in the first half and said, said this might be a totally different game in the second half, and it certainly looked different, and we'll get to that in a second. The Aaron scoring summary, nine plays, 64 yards, 429 before Long has the touchdown carry to give Sarah Land the lead. Well, almost every game we've done, there's four quarters in. And when you get too excited or get the impression that you've got it all figured out after one or two, maybe you don't. Um, we've seen so many things different go differently in games here on Friday nights. Purdue takes it at the 15. Brandolin Purdue going to the wide side of the field. He breaks a tackle at the 30. Still on his feet, the 40. Trying to get around the kicker. And Harper pushes him out of bounds at midfield, but there's a flag back to the 33-yard line. How about Purdue, too? Sean Long on one side and Purdue on the other. Hearts of Lions. I've never seen a runner just right. kind of stop like he does. Yep, got the block in the back. Wow. That one's in the back. Johnny Milton. The second one wasn't in the back, but uh, the first one was, and now it, it comes back. I mean, you see that return guy changes directions like that, and the, the blockers just... Yep. Gonna get caught in no man's land. And right. Instead yeah. of having it, they were all the way up to the 48 yard line. We've had some impactful penalties here in the second half. Wow. You're Taking right. scores off the scoreboard and posi field position away. And During the run, away. had a personal foul, hitting a defenseless player away from the football. That's a 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, I've never heard that call on special teams because everybody is eligible to make a tackle. Yep. And, you know, coaches talk about playing aggressive and finding someone to block. I don't care where you are. There's some folks that can come run you down from out of nowhere. So you better block everybody. That's a 34-yard change in possession penalty. Yep. And just another one of those. Quinny fires it out. And the artist Batiste out of the backfield up to the 25. And we'll see if Quinley can lead his troops down the field to get the equaling score. Batiste, just a junior. And they'll empty the backfield with four receivers to the bottom of your screen. Yeah, they are not matched up. Purdue. Slips through a tackle, and now Brando and Purdue up the near sideline, up the 40, inside the 20. The 10 cuts back, touchdown Trojans, 75 yards. And the pass may have been a yard in front of the uh, line of scrimmage, or maybe not. Just a quick screen out there, those four wide receivers. Basically, you had three blockers, right, Vic Lockett? Yeah, well, just by formation, they were not lined up correctly defensively, and that was trouble just before the ball was even snapped. Especially when you got a player like that with some talent and make a couple of moves and make one more right here for Jim Cox to get excited and takes it on into the end zone. 75 yards. Purdue will be approaching 200 yards and receiving here tonight. And now Varela will try to tie it up. And it is 14-14 here tonight at Spartan Stadium. The Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers Game of the Week, and we have got a great one going on in Saraland tonight. Daphne and the Spartans tied at 14. Big players make big plays on Friday nights. We just saw one. And Coach Victor, he'll take his four against three all night long, and yeah. that's what he got out there. <laughs> You're right, anybody would. <laughs> yeah. Morella. High kick. Sean Young at the 12. Looking for a blocker. Across the 30 to the 37 yard line. Two plays. 82 yards. 59 seconds. It didn't take long after the 75 yard touchdown reception. That was Sean Long back there to return that one. Yeah, we're having some fun here, and I got folks caught texting in. Jason Connell says he's jumping up and down on his couch enjoying this game. <laughs> Get off that couch, Jason. It is fun. From 39, it's a great, great night. Week two. 
of the season for some teams. Week one for these two. Long tries to get to the outside. Spins at the 40. Takes a big hit. Still on his feet. As he was able to get away from Mason, the linebacker, and pick up a few on that play when it looked like, again, it was going nowhere. Those are the guy that, the kind of kids that I enjoy getting on the field after the game and shaking their hands. Yeah. I mean, I mean you know, what's Entertaining he, us tonight? Yeah, what's he giving us tonight? Hey, I'd like him on my team. I'm telling you, that's what you want. Three minutes gone by here in the fourth. It was 7 0 at the half. Daphne, Sarah Land came out, scored two touchdowns to take a 14 7 lead. Then Daphne answered right back, and that's where we're at. West looking for Bellis on the near side, who holds on inside the 30. Dropped that one right between the safety in the corner. West puts it in Bellis' hands, and Bellis Jones has got the first down and more. How many sophomores that can make this throw with this touch? Yeah, I wish we could have seen Bellos doing a good job just fighting off the defender to get him off me, not depending on the call and giving up on the play, playing on through the play, catching the football. Great job by Bellis Jones. To the 26. Long on the right side. Trent Ellis will pull him down after a gain of three. Young guys playing grown man football. Yep. <laughs> There's a young kid right there growing up right before our eyes. Yeah, we're really going to watch so. him. I mean, for three, year, three years on Friday nights, we're going to watch this young man play. Yeah. And then the, the scramble, of course, is where after that. But uh, just a great game. Just so much fun to be here. Long to the 20. A tough couple of yards he picked up on that one. We will see this Daphne team again next Friday night. We'll be at Jubilee Stadium as the Blunt Leopards come to town. And we'll have it for you right here on UTV 44. What about Hunter Henderson? You just saw the fullback in there just all night long, blocking, 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 blocking. I like that name, Hunter Henderson. Isn't that a football name? Yep, yeah, it is. Same play, pitch to the near side, and Williams can't hold on to the ball, is loose and recovered by Mason and the Trojans. Nick Williams came in. That was the same play they ran to score the touchdown on the last drive when they pitched it to Long, and Williams didn't hold on to it in the turnover as yeah. Mason falls on a loose football for Daphne. Yeah, Nick didn't look it all the way in, kind of looking up at the defenders. He hadn't been playing much, so he's a little cold coming off the sideline. Getting a difficult kind of pitch to him and wasn't able to hold on. Boy, an excited Daphne coaching staff yeah, right, next, right to next door. I thought they were going to break the door now. Some guys that we've known for a long time, including Glenn Vickery's son. Quinley gives it off McCollum. Right up the middle, and there wasn't much there as Bryce Hoven was in to make the stop for the Spartans. No gain on the play in second and ten. A couple of no-nonsense teams. There's Hunter Mason, sophomore. Getting the start defensively. 6'2", 215, just a sophomore. We'll be watching him on Friday nights on that side of the ball for Jeff Kelly, and now a flag for the play. You're right. Well, it's going to be a huddle or either too many 12, men out 12 there. Twelve men on the field for Daphne. I can count up to ten. They brought in uh, Newman to as the power running quarterback. I still got 12 on there. And McCullum didn't come out, and now he'll come out and back um, him up five, second and 15. Change the, call, change the call now. Now you've got your thrower back in there. Dead Down. ball, illegal substitution. 12 men in the formation. Five-yard penalty, replay the down. You know, if they don't catch it, it's a great advantage. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Vic said, they had him outnumbered. <laughs> you always win a play that way. From the 19, second and 15 after the penalty. Quinley looks right now, fires back to far side, and the ball goes up in the air and incomplete. Through the hands of Khalil Johnson, the sophomore. Well, when you're dropping it, it goes straight down. That's one thing. When, when this happens, whoa. Tip drill. Man. Oski usually comes behind the tip drill. Yeah. Dominio Williams was right there. Close to it, and now third and 15 from your own 19.
Quinley with pressure coming, rolls out, flips it to the far side, incomplete again. Quinley Johnson did a good job to, to avoid the heat there. He delivered it, uh, just didn't get it caught on the other end. Yeah, it was not going to be enough for the first down, obviously. So, you know, obviously, Sarah Lamb disappointed that they fumbled it in the first place, but the defense did excellent damage control there. And yeah, it didn't cost them. No. So they'll get it back right now with kind of edging toward that heat timeout, about six minutes and 10 seconds to go in the game. Varela will punt it from inside his own five. I take that back, six minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game. Alex Sweet back to return this one. That one a little more off the side of his foot, but does take a good Daphne bounce to the 41-yard line. Mm -hmm. The Trojans will take over. Hey, we asked you a trivia question in the first half to ask you the four players from Alabama who were drafted number one overall. I got two. All right. Jamarcus Russell. Yep, that's the easy one. McCants. No, he was uh, number six or seven. Okay. Get that one. Auburn, Auburn had a pretty good running back. Bo Jackson. Uh, there's that one. Winston uh, went number one. Another one from, here we go. Harry Gilmore from Woodlawn back in 1948. Bo Jackson, Andre Bruce back in 1988. And Jamarcus Russell, four from Alabama to be number one overall in the NFL draft. Now, Jameis, they skipping. They missed him. That is a great, great call there. Vic Lockett should have been five. <laughs> there you go. We will get on the research department. But that is department. four. He asked for four. You didn't have to name but them I, all. I didn't you say all. Four. I just said, I just said name four. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we're going to get on the research department on that one, and uh, <laughs> someone will be fired before the evening's over. Pretty excited to know where we have a research department. <laughs> Fifteen years you and I <laughs> doing this continues to grow. We're at halfway through the third, uh, through the fourth quarter, and see if we get the heat timeout. Second and 15 after the loss. West looks, looking to his right, fires it. That one tipped up in the air and incomplete. Was trying to get it to Nick Williams and now third and 15 coming up. A little hot sauce on that one, Dan. Yeah, man. Just waiting for him to uncover and uh, didn't have to get too much, too much of a window in there and he slipped it in there and just didn't collect it. Hung in the air like a balloon at a car sale. <laughs> Third and 15, and we'll take the heat time out here with 540 left in the Green and Phillips Injury Lawyers Game of the Week here on UTV 44, and we'll take a timeout with him. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Locke, and Ashley Pope on the sideline, and our entire UTV 44 crew here tonight. 14-14 in Sarah Land. With 5.36 left. I thought we had a whistle. No. Jeff Kelly changed the play. And now the play clock down at 10. West looks. Fires incomplete. He was trying to get it to Cody Nolan. Sarah wanted a flag, but I think the defender just beat him to the spot. Good work over on the far side by Lance Kidd. Good coverage. My kid brings up fourth down. And now. Miles Henderson and Tyrick Richardson. Back to receive the clock still running, and now they just stopped it, so they'll have to reset the clock. We don't want to get cheated out of any seconds of this game. No. We'll milk it for every. Every, se every second, every millisecond, huh? I've been crying all the way down I 65. <laughs> Got some more folks watching the game. Frank Lott watching this game on, on the Lott family boat, the Proud Mary. They're sitting at Orange Beach Marina watching the game on the boat here tonight. Waiting for me so we can leave to go fishing together. All right, let's not... Uh... Rub it in, huh? Yeah. You know. Joy, they're watching the game. I'm having a bologna sandwich. I'll be cutting the grass in the morning, so. <laughs> uh, Jim won Dan nothing. 
So he reset it to 5-10. Fourth and 15 from the 36. Zach Everett. On to punt. End over in. Tyrick Richardson at the 26. Richardson has some white jerseys in front of him. Waits, now spins back. And he'll get out to the 40 year, uh, 40 yard line. And Daphne will take over with five minutes remaining this one. I want to thank Green and Phillips. It's the Green and Phillips UTV 44 high school football game of the week. Accident victims need to call 911. Get a police report and seek medical attention. Victims on average get three and a half times more compensation with an attorney. Green and Phillips injury lawyers are local. They live here and work here, and they're proud to bring you high school football each and every Friday night. Green and Phillips injury lawyers proud to be a part of UTV 44 high school football here. 12th year on UTV 44? 10th year, 10th year. Give to Batiste. Got Daphne Trojan slow to get up. Nathaniel Rhodes, left guard. He was trying to get up, and you heard Tim Dees, the referee, say, well, go ahead and stay down and wait for Brian Metz, your trainer, to come out and check on you. I never had a chance to meet Tim Dees, but I'm, I'm with you. I just like the way mm -hmm. he oversees a game. You know, just a five-man crew here tonight. A lot of action going on for five. You know, oh, times yeah. you see the seven, seven man crew. Got five here tonight. And Rhodes is gonna get up. I'll have to go out for a play. You know, as human as is, we hadn't seen any of the young men going down with cramping nope. issues tonight, anything like that. You guys right. in shape, huh? And you got it. Humidity's not as heavy. Second and nine from the 40, we're inside five minutes to go. Batiste in motion, they give it to him. He cuts it up the far side of the 46, and he was an ankle tackle away from breaking yeah. that one for a big one. I get Vic Lockett that I just saw a ghost look. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. that was close, yeah, huh? Yeah, he cut it up in there. Looks like he was gonna slice through there. Third and a long three coming up for the Trojans, and they bring Jackson Newman back at quarterback. Got an H back in there to do some blocking. He's going to take it go. on the right side, lowers the shoulder, and it's going to be very close. We have not had a measurement here tonight, but I think we might get our first one here. That's the old right foot, left foot, right? Where do they lay the ball down? This is what he does. It's Sarah Land up to the task. We'll have the chains. Reed and uh, Aaron, a couple of the usual suspects tonight for yep. the Spartan defense. Stop them right there. You talk about some big time decisions being made. 344. Left in this one on the 48, and he's that short. Missed it by that much. Like I said, some big time decisions about to be made right now. You got the big quarterback that we've seen in these situations, and he's going to stay in there, and the Saraland crowd just below us. Put in the suit and body, the Psychos. And now they send Newman off and bring McCollum in at quarterback. McCollum going to go on the right side, shoves forward, and he's going to have the first down. I mean, it's the just, first time we've had that look tonight. Yep, and he didn't need much, and he was able to get what he needed, cross the 50-yard line, extend the drive. 
Just get some forward progress right there. All you needed was about six inches, and he got enough. And right at the midfield stripe with three and a half to go. And senior quarterback John Quinley, who has played very well here this yeah. evening. He's played like a senior quarterback. Yep. Looks out of the backfield, hits Batiste. Batiste with two blockers in front of him. Batiste to about the 43-yard line. A perfect angle on that one. It was actually a lateral. Batiste caught it behind the quarterback, so that could be considered a rush attempt. And it looks like if he'd have cut it inside there, he'd have had some uh, alleys to go through. Picks up six. Speaking of Allie, uh, Seth Sanders checking in. And beautiful wife, Allie. Oh, thought you were going to say he was watching the game in an alley. Oh, Ball's no. on the ground, loose, recovered by the Spartans. And the Greek guys come alive. Ball came loose, and Josea Mills had it bounce right at him. That one wasn't a forced fumble, just Batiste. I think he was maybe expecting a handoff, and it was maybe more of a pitch. It went yeah. right through his arms. Yeah, the part-time quarterback right there. Yeah, Only takes so many snaps. Yep. Not sure how it was going to come to him, and uh, he just couldn't think as fast, and ball ended up on the ground. Now, this is how Hollywood would write it up, right here. 238. And now... And the Ooh, great now crowd he, now hey, giving uh, it to uh, him. Uh, any chance they're saying that was a pass? Incomplete? Any chance saying that was a pass and incomplete? Was that the call? Let's see here. That may be the conversation for certain. Daphne's offense still on the field and Sarah Land's defense coming out. Watch. That's it. It is a pass. Incomplete pass. You're right. It is a pass. Tell you what, he's in control of this game. And That's it. That's... I don't know about that guy. Well, it's almost tough rules stuff it, there. It, not well, it is or it isn't. It was uh, forward pass. The, U, the, old, U, the old Utah pass. Purdue now. They're gonna punt this, right? It's third down, and now a flag against Daphne. Well, but then he oh, gives sorry. him the timeout for whatever reason. He threw the flag. I don't yeah. know what he. I got mixed up on down there. Play clock wasn't going down, but maybe they didn't have a formation of personnel that they wanted in. It was third and four. Yeah, you don't punt that one, that's for sure. <laughs> Says Coach Brennan. You do try again, right? Yeah, you do try again. But yeah, I, I don't know if they got the time. They must have got the timeout before the flag. Yep, the clock didn't run out for certain. No, see, there it is again. He throws I mean, it forward. It's the shortest pass in high school football uh, that we've seen. Yeah. Yep, they wave off the flag. It's funny because right. I just talked about the fact that it was a lateral before that. The long pass, the only right. reason bringing it up really didn't matter. But if it had been incomplete, it would have been a live ball. Right. That one, you think right away is a fumble. It is not a live ball. And the, because of the, the jumbotron they have here and showing our feed, they had a great replay to show the crowd here. I think the ref cheated a bit and look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a good point. I mean, I thought, but it didn't, it was a, uh, there was not a lot of conversation. It was a, a call made quickly. Pretty quick, yeah. Well, yeah. now that that's happened, I want a definition of what is a pass now. Because that did not reach the line of scrimmage. Don't have time to get to Wikipedia right now. <laughs> uh, two minutes, 38 seconds, you got a game to call, right? Yeah. Third, <laughs> third and four, Brandolin Purdue at quarterback. Purdue going to keep it, trying to get to the outside, and he turns the corner at the 40, and he spins to the 30, and first down for the Daphne Trojans. Stick on that point. Uh, a forward pass does not have to reach the uh, line of scrimmage. That's true. Just as we said, we hadn't seen any players go down with cramps. I think that's exactly oh. what Brandlin Purdue is dealing with here. Yeah, he had to kick in another gear there, and the muscles were not ready, and uh, that's the result of it is a cramp. Stretch him out, and he'll have to come out for a play. He was fun to watch last year as a junior. Fun to watch this year. Boy, they want to finish off this drive. Getting number one back in the game is going to be very important. And now he's thinking, 
I am over at the numbers on this side, and I've got to walk all the way mm -hmm. over there. I can tell you guys, sometimes those cramps are the worst pain you've ever felt. I mean, it feels like you're just cut that leg off. Especially on the on the thigh. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, the big biggest muscles, muscles in your Ooh, leg, man. I mean, in your body. Yeah, no doubt. In the country, they call them Charlie horses. <laughs> Jim never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, first down at the 30, and Quinley comes back in. Mine were so bad, they were Johnny horses. <laughs> I can picture you getting one of those. <laughs> I can picture him whining about it while he's doing oh, yeah. as well. I'm a baby. <laughs> Quinley gives it off McCollum. Not much on the right side, and he stood up there. He'll get a couple. Down. Approaching two minutes to go. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Spartans kind of hanging on for overtime now. That looked like they had that turnover. Yeah. And now Daphne has driven it to the 27. What a performance by this Daphne team on the road to open the season. Hostile environment. Come in here and play football, right? Well coached, yeah. ready to go. That's absolutely it. You hit the point, brother. It just kids used to being in big games. The athlete kids are used to being in big games. Play clock down to three. Quinley looks, looking on the near side and out of bounds as Miles Henderson had been pushed out of bounds. And then that incomplete pass also stops the clock with a minute 29 left at third and seven coming up. Try to out West Jack West. A little <laughs> touch pass on the sideline. Jack's had some Success with that tonight. Well, I tell you what, Quinley's held his own as well. Oh, no doubt. Passing it too. Got a couple of good quarterbacks here tonight. Josh Barella has a big leg. Daphne was going to try a 42-yard field goal in the first half, you remember, and then they called a timeout and decided to go for it. Third and seven. And now the point. Blame game going on between the red and the white. It's against the offense. Third and 12 coming up. So from here. Dead ball, false start, offense. Five yard penalty, replay third down. From here would be a 47 yard attempt. That's long. Not Even a, in the pros, huh? That's long, man. Not a puff of air moving. But you're kind of in a little bit of no man's land in two down territory. Quinley has time looking over the middle for Graves and he can't connect. Yeah, I thought he was er open early and then uh, he came covered again. And Graves got turned around a little bit toward the goal yeah. line. Might have got the wrong shoulder, but uh, Quinley gave it a shot right there and now. What do you do? And it looks like they're bringing out they're either try, punt or field goal. They're going to try. It will be a 47-yard attempt. Tell you what, you can't miss the kicker. Size and attire. And so actually, this is going to be a, a 50-yard attempt. A 50-yard attempt, a bad snap, and the ball is loose. Newman picks it up, and he's dropped all the way back at the 47-yard line. So not only do they not get the points, but they lose 17 yards in the process. Worst-case scenario for Daphne. Yeah, the snap was not on target. He had to lean over to try to pick it up and gather it. He's yelling fire, but before he can fire the guys out, the Greek guys are all over. Well, I, I guess you did your research on where the Spartans come from. Yeah, right? I had to figure that out. Uh, we were having that conversation during the break. I, I'm, I'm a geography major, so I should have known that anyway. And let me tell you, this is that script I was talking about. The young quarterback everybody's talking about has the ball at midfield, chance to win the game. Let's see what happens. 116 left in two timeouts. West with pressure from Ellis. Throws to the near side. He's able to get it complete. And he's got it to Sean Long. Great play by Long. Yeah, that was Long. That was off target there. If he'd have got him in stride, he 
he has a chance. Yeah, he's still running, right? Great job by Long to get his arms underneath that ball yeah. before it hits the beautiful turf here at Spartan Stadium. To the 34 yard line. Clock running inside a minute. West looking, floats it up into traffic, and that one is nearly picked off. Looked like Bowers had a second of the night, but we got a flag at the 20. Wow. This one into some coverage. Yeah, West would want that one back. Look at Bowers showing up, and actually there's two right there, including Richardson, who may have had it. Defensive yeah. holding. Yeah. That's probably, that's most certainly on Richardson. This young kid really competes. And right around the 20. He's not going to give you a cheat one, huh? He got a hook in, evidently, so. <laughs> wow, what a finish to what a game. And we're not finished. And we're not finished, right. <laughs> Moves it to the 24-yard line, 10-yard penalty and a first down. How about the trust Kelly's got in West? Still throwing the football, even though that one turned out ill-advised. Now, Tyreek Richardson has to go out for a play, yeah. lost his helmet. Good so point. now you've got, you've got Kidd matched up against Bellis Jones at the top of the screen. They'll get off. Nick Williams turns the corner and gets knocked out of bounds. There was some late contact over here, and they will oh, throw the flag I in. That, I, didn't, I didn't see him. I mean, the kid fell back. I thought the defender it looked, pulled up. It, it did look like the Daphne player was trying to hold up, but, of course, it's on the Sarah Lane side. There you go. Wrong sideline. Wrong place at the wrong time, right, huh? Let's see what you would call. You're the official. Some guy's out of bounds. Oh, well, he ducked his head. Yeah, That's he what they saw. Kind of dropped the shoulder on yeah. him. Yeah. I think you got to call that one, yep. especially in that neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Half You're the right. distance. I don't know, move it down to the Dead 12. Ball after the play, personal foul, hit out of bounds mm. against the defense. That's half the distance, and it's a first down. Spotted at the 11 with 43 seconds left. Two timeouts. Two timeouts each side. And the Spartans in the Papa John's delivery zone. Use promo code RIVALS, get two large, two topping pizzas for just $7.77 each. West gives it off to Long up the middle. Long pushes the pile to the five. And Sarah Land will take a timeout here with 33 seconds left while the clock's still running. How about the lessons that Jack West is learning, not in the classroom, not in a scrimmage, not in the parking lot, not on a video game, but live against a great defense. Right here on UTV 44. Yeah. The best learning you can get. There you go. Get, he, you know, you always talk about reps. These quarterbacks need reps as well, and they need reps in live action, and that's what he's getting tonight. And this is a heck of a defense that Daphne brought across the bay, right? Well coached. You Very what, fast. I, yeah. I think this is what we're just going to see a lot of Friday nights, 6A Region 1. I mean, I just think we're, this is what we're going to see a lot of Friday nights. I mean, Let's see Sarah Land, Daphne, Spanish Fort. Well, they might maybe don't want to hear this in, in Sarah Land, but it's it's striking how similar this is to the rise of Spanish Fort. You're right. You know, where the community just got behind it. The team kind of mythically became good. Yep. Then we started to visit and see the team. Got a great coach. Yeah, right. Great coach, offensive guy. Yep. Kids always played through the whistle. Yep. And there's a great coach, too, and Glenn Vickery. Right. So, not that it's probably going to matter, but the ball's on the five. They actually can get a first down at the one, so it's not a to-goal situation. West gives it to Long on the left side. Long, helmet comes loose, and he's in for the touchdown. Had a way to run the football in, Dan. How about it? That kid's done it all night, especially here in the second half. Sean Long has been the man. Yeah, I love it. That line gave him some good push up the middle there, and he just found some space to negotiate right there. Kept his legs driving. Helmets flying all over the place, but whistle not blown. Hey, keep going. Good look at that kid there. He's a good football player. And now Harper. On for the important PAT, and he's got it, and it's 
So 21-14 with 27 sec 26.9 seconds left. Daphne, two timeouts. Good drive by the hey, Spartans. Here's the here's the have we ever seen a Daphne game oh. get wonky right down Man. here in the last seconds on have we UTV ever. 44? Yeah, don't uh, don't turn away. Two timeouts. Usually against Foley. For yes. Daphne. Bless their hearts. As the saying go, don't touch that dial. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> now with the Trojans late. Don't touch that clicker. Yeah. One timeout for Sarah Land. A huge crowd here tonight. They've been ready for some football here in Sarah Land. And, and it's going to look that way in Daphne next week. Yeah, and they had this one circled too. I mean, what a way to open the season. You know, for them and for us, although we had a, a game last week, this is the first week where everybody's games yep. are uh, on the books and counting. Brandilyn Purdue left with those cramps, but he's back there, stands at the 15. Batiste also back there. Tyrick Richardson is one of the up men. And Harper on the kick. Quick look, Gene Everett in Spanish Fort watching the game on UTV 44 tonight. I was glad to hear, excited to hear of everyone watching the game. Let's watch this kick. Purdue takes it at the 12. Brandon and Purdue looking to change field and had nothing there. And he's out at the 20 with 21 seconds left. And now your senior quarterback. And Purdue, you can kind of say he's battling those cramps again. Yeah. He just didn't have anything. Yeah, he set it down, didn't he? Yeah, you know, after that big uh, play that he made, went off with the cramps, and to try and finish that drive, they were doing it without yeah. their, their best player. Yeah, it takes away your such a weapon on offense, and he has to hop on the back of one of his teammates just to get off the field. How about that team right there? Not having to take an injury timeout. Let's get it on. At the 20, there's Jeff Kelly. Four wide receivers. And Quinley steps up, looks over the middle, and short hops that one. He's trying to get it to Miles Henderson. Incomplete. Now, you can go to the middle of the field because they, they will stop the clock to move the chains. Yep. And you but, got two timeouts, but you got 17 seconds yeah, now. That's, that's the thing. It's, it's just two. Got to get some chunks. Yeah, too little time unless you're just going to have one incredibly explosive play. And I tell you what, now Quinley has the arm. These safeties are Graves. 20 yards back and, yeah. and, and going to be backpedaling too. Yep, hit the snap. They're going to take two more steps. Yes, they are. Or three. Watch for Graves. Number 13, he's a speed so they can stretch the field. They're rushing three. And they look his way and he's got it. And he's out of bounds at the 39-yard line of first down with yeah. 11 seconds left. That didn't feel good. Yeah, nice play, though. Nice play call. Nice selection there by Quinlan. He hit the receiver right there at the little out-of-bounds so mark to so stop the clock, too. Now you just got to get a big chunk so you can try to get a big chunk. You got about two plays left here yep. throwing it down the field. Yeah, you, you almost can't miss on one, right? And no more middle of the field unless you get a timeout. They, uh, they got two. And Purdue not in the game. Graves and Henderson. Up top, fires over the middle. He's got it. Now they flip it back off with Shad McCullum, and he's got a first down at the 45-yard line and 3.6 seconds left. They stop the clock. Daphne, I'm sure, will take a timeout. Hook and ladder play. Draw up with a can here. Could be the last play of the game. And got it at the 45, and you got a sniff. You know, you, you pick up the extra yardage there, and you've got it. Daphne will take their timeout to talk things over. You know, you, you give... Quinley a pocket. He can get it down there by the goal line. Anything can happen. Most of Sarah Land's players will be kind of close to the I-1065 interchange. <laughs> <laughs> here to make sure. Back deep, huh? Keep everything in front of them. And, and you'll hear the defensive coaches get back even further. Take yeah. it on the I-10. Sarah Land safeties are going to be setting up in Chickasaw. <laughs> and we'll just keep watching over there to see if Brandel and Purdue Comes back in the game. This game was 7-0 with a half, Daphne. 14-7 yep. in the third quarter. Sarah Land Storm back to take the lead. Daphne comes right back to answer. And then with 27 seconds left, Sarah Land gets the go-ahead score. 
And that's where we are now. 21-14 with 3.6 seconds left. Ball is at the far hash. They keep McCullum in the block in the backfield to give Quinley a little extra time. Low snap. Quinley rolls out to his right. Now he's going to cut it back the other way. Buys a lot of time. Wants to heave it into the end zone. Look at it. It's incomplete. No flags, and Saraland defends their home field to open up the season with a 21-14 win over Daphne. Quinley got it there. He got it there. He did. What a ball game. What a ball game. The crowd is loving it here in the home castle. What a game to open up region play. 21-14, Saraland holds on. Come back from a 7-0 halftime deficit to get the win here and now open up the season 1-0. Just a great game. I mean, it really a, was. Really just a great, well-played game, both yeah. teams. And it wasn't the same game the whole game, yep. you know? Things change. But I, I think one of the big changes Saraland made offensively in the second half was putting the young quarterback under center. I think yeah. it just stabilized And things. running the football and, in yeah, my opinion. No doubt. And, and Long was a, a beast in the second half. They blocked better in the second half, but when they didn't block better, it did not matter to Sean Long. Well, they may be a better run blocking group up front. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Let's go down to check in with Ashley. She's got the victorious head coach, Jeff Kelly. Coach Kelly, congratulations. I just want to know, what do you think of Jack West's first time starting as a sophomore at your quarterback? You know, we had we had a bunch of players that, uh, that made some big plays. I was real proud of our defense. I thought Sean Long played extremely well. I thought Jack sort of grew up as the game went. You know, we knew coming in, uh, Daphne, outstanding football team, great defense. They like to put a lot of pressure on you. Something a uh, young kid hadn't seen a whole lot. I thought he grew up a bunch and made some big plays down the stretch. But I'm really proud of our defense. All night long, making some uh, making some big plays. I also want to say hello to my grandpa, who's watching the game back in uh, Deer Park. So uh, it was. I'm proud of our kids. They never they never quit. They uh, our, our our guys up front. We challenged them at halftime. We didn't run the ball very well in the first half, and and we tried to talk to them about getting back to who we really are. We got to run the football to be successful, and we did that in the second half. And that's what you told me at halftime. You said there's two quarters left, but I got to know it's week one. It ended up like this on your home turf. Are you going to put us through this every week? <laughs> hey, whether it's, it's a one-point win or whatever, I'm just proud for our kids. I'm so proud of our community. What a great uh, showcase for Sarah Land, our city school system, and our community coming out. I, I don't know if there's a better place in the state that supports like they do. I'm real proud to be a part of it. They have treated us well tonight, too, so Thank we you. appreciate Thank it. You Thank you. Here. Jeff Kelly, excited coach. And we're excited as well. I mean, you know, we really thought coming in this one, this was going to be this type of uh, a game as far as close, well-played, competitive game, and we certainly got that here tonight. And Sarah Land gets the victory by a score of 21. And congratulations to Grandpa Kelly. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Deer Park, yeah, and Deer yeah. Park watching the game tonight as Sarah Land gets the victory 21-14. and. You know, Daphne, uh, what a test to come on the road and to come to this place and try to get a victory. And, you know, they played really well here tonight. I think Coach Victory is just going to say, you know, this 6A Region 1 football, this is what you get on Friday nights. Yeah, and I think he also, uh, he and again, Coach Victory, you know, we love him to death. The guy's been through so much. Yep. Winning, losing, winning state championships, health issues, you know. Coach is the same. Never feels like the moment's too big for him, and you know it's not. So it's a loss, yeah, but he saw a lot of good tonight too, right? Yeah, and I thought Coach Coach Kelly, you know, made a great point when he talked about just how well Sean Long ran the football. You know, ran it pretty well in the first half. Maybe the offensive line didn't wasn't quite giving him what Coach Kelly expected. But, boy, in the second half, I mean, he had those two big touchdowns. It was different. turns out to be the difference in the game. No doubt. You know, and he showed what he was made out of, and those guys uh, started blocking up front, which Dan uh, pointed out. And maybe, just like we said, they may be just a better run blocking team here early in the season. Yeah. And then they'll develop into a better pass blocking team. But uh, give credit to Daphne as well because they were putting some heat on uh, West early in the game and often. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you look at the makeup of that offensive line, they probably are a better run-blocking team, but there's no doubt in my mind, after spending some time up on this campus earlier this week, there were some conversations, some very pointed, heated conversations at halftime that made sure that uh, this team knew what was expected of them 
because they just looked different in the second half. They really did. Uh, and I think one thing to keep in mind, too, is we've seen this in years past. We could see these two teams in a playoff. No doubt. Rematch, you know, in about two and a half months from now. I'd, be, I'd pay for that. Exactly, and hopefully we'll be here. And, uh, you know, you talk about expectations over there in Daphne. I think they're developing it here over up no here. Doubt. I mean, these guys are expected to win just like you talked about, and they're expected to play hard, and you saw it, bent those players. All right, we'll give you our player of the game nominees from Daphne. Brandilyn Purdue had a big night receiving, and from the Sarah Land Spartans, Sean Long, we just talked about him, and, of course, the Sophomore quarterback Jack West, go to UTV44.com tonight, and you can start voting on that, and we'll tell you who was the player of the game next week when we have these same Daphne Trojans at home when they take on the Blunt Leopards. So final score, Sarah Land wins it by a 21-14 margin for Ashley Pope down on the sideline, Jared Kihas in the truck, and our entire crew here tonight on UTV44. Vic Lockett, Dan Brennan, Jim Cox up at the booth saying goodnight from Sarah Land. We're at Spartan Stadium. Sarah Land wins it 21-14.